Watch out. Uh, I'll get it open. Let's see. Okay. We're live. You are live. A little apostrophe and everything. Hello. Because I have to tweet about it too, right? Uh, but yeah, hello. Um, we're going to do some stuff with Convex today is the goal, right? Yes. Um, everyone Let's, can see uh, the golf. You can see, you can see this. Uh, this is my screen. Uh, we've got this golf app that Tom made in another stream. Uh, it's got a few, maybe a few bucks, but you can see we're clicking around and we can play and maybe Tom can go. Oh, maybe I can well. go there too. That would really help you understand that. Yeah, and uh, anyone who's watching, you can also go to this URL, ball-shoot.vercel.app, and then you can play with your little... I got the dark oh. blue one. Cool. All right, you can click around, and this is the same for everyone. Pretty cool. All right, so today, what's the plan? Well, so I, I made this thing, and it was fine, um, but there's the piece of code that does the simulation where so when you click it this ball takes off and then it falls down with some gravity and there is some code that does the physics simulation to figure out where it is that runs both on the client to provide the quick animation and on the server because we're trying to be clever and not let you cheat and the thought was um oh, this is interesting when i look when i look at you when i look here i'm looking at you but when i look there am i looking away from you uh, is it, I, is I it correct? No, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, there's the fun setup. Um, yeah, the, the thought was uh, that we could write in another language. Uh, it doesn't need to be JavaScript. We could write it in WebAssembly. And WebAssembly is this cool, you know, low level, you know, something with roughly JavaScript semantics, but. Uh, but it lets you, it's compiled. Yeah, yeah, it's compiled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it should be a faster to do it. So I wanted to try to do that. Um, and. And, and that's, that's our goal. goal. Um, Faster, maybe smaller? Maybe, maybe smaller, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and why are we doing it? I mean, it's a little silly. And we're using Convex, this tool. We work on at work. Um, and this is not really, you know, this is not the, the thing the Convex dev experience is focused on. Right? Convex is all about you get to write your JavaScript functions. Um, but you get to write your backend in JavaScript or TypeScript, usually, mm -hmm. in the cloud, and those functions just run for you when we scale it for you and everything's beautiful. Um, and some of the point is that you get to write it in TypeScript because that's usually the language you want your business logic in. You, you don't necessarily want to write a bunch of backend code or you know, business logic in Rust, but you could, and so that's what we want to try to do. Yeah, yeah, you can totally, I guess you can write front-end code in Rust, and we'll see how that works. So we've, so we've got, got this working, right? Yesterday we played with this just enough to, uh, yeah, yes, to do so I've got the code, code right here. Um, and then we can update. Oh, oh, right. oh this is all great. great. This, this is this is the interesting one. one. Yeah, so I'm, my cursor's in here too. Um, we've got, I don't know why this is, this is red there. Oh, it just doesn't know that it is. So uh, we could do some typing or something, but yeah, we, uh, this is where we use the code? Is that? Oh, no, no, no. This, this was just our code where we were just trying out the function. function. So this was, yeah. this was kind of dummy code. Um, but otherwise, this is the math that it might make sense to try. Not that. that that's not the math. The math is in uh, how about where is it? The file is called O-Simulation. There you go. How did you do that? How did you get there so quick? I held down command. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Wow, that's pretty good. Pretty clever. Um, yeah, yeah, so this, this is the code, code that we could, you know, this is my messy type script, script that we could okay. trans, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. so let's, let's take a look at what it's doing. It's uh, saying if the ball, so what is the ball's time stamp? The, this is when it was created? Or when it was this created? is when it, so, so it's called ball, but it should really be called stroke or something. This is, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, so a ball, if we, if we, can you command click on that while we go to the data type? That would be cool. Uh, oh, right there. Click on that. Let's look there. at this data type. Yeah. So I have a type ball. Well, it's not the auto type. It's just my data type. Um, it has a time at which it was at that x and y. And at that time, it had a dx and a dy. And so that, that's when it was impacted by the imaginary um, golf club of the player. And it is flying. And so. If you, you want to know where it is now, you have to say, well, what time is it now? Oh, it's two seconds after the time there? Great, let's run this physics simulation for two seconds worth 
to figure out where it is at that time. Okay. And that is what all this simulation code is supposed and to be this doing. Is all in the simulation code. Oh, and okay. This file is not that long. That yeah, it's yeah, not, not too, too bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if um. So if if you want to know where the ball, the, oh, this is a current a position yet. function. Okay. Yeah. 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 If if the hit is in the future, yeah. then then you just leave it where it is. Yeah. Okay. We could also add here a if the hit was more than a certain amount in the past. Um, well, but we still don't know where it should be now, so we still have to do the simulation. Um, but that seems like an inefficient aspect. Yes. Right? Like, <laughs> for all of these balls back in here, all those colored balls sitting at the bottom, uh -huh. um, every one of those is running a 1,000 step, or maybe not that long, but it's running a physics simulation to figure out where it is right now based oh, on the last hit that it did. That's interesting. So we could we change that. that we could, yeah, we can improve that so that it says, you know what? It, it, it never, never takes more than 10 seconds, seconds or like when, when it lands, go ahead and save a new thing in the database. Right. Yeah, we can say that, like, we can say that uh, when it lands, when it's no longer moving, then save a new thing in the database where it's like a, a no log uh, DX, DY, or both zero. Yeah. And then we can even special case a no op or, or yeah, or hopefully the, the physics simulation, unfortunately, I think, well, no, I think it stops if it's not moving or something. So that would be okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is checking that we, if we go off the sides, we uh, stop, I guess. Mm -hmm. This is, what is it saying? Does it, it goes back to where it was when you clicked it. I guess, what is ball? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it goes back to where it was when you moved. Yep, it's when back. you clicked it. Okay. Which, Which means, if you, if you click it up in the air just a little bit, and then hit it to the side, the place it goes back to is still in the air. Okay. So, so hit it so up. I hit it up. Yeah, and, and then, then do that. Out the side. Yeah. yeah. Now it's now there. there. Okay. <laughs> because that's the place it was when you hit it. Great. And that's, that's what, what these things are. are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so great. Those are an interesting Wait, way. Why aren't these things falling? Um, because when, when hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. okay. They, they aren't, aren't falling because what we ran the simulation and it said, oh, they're off the screen. Reset the. So they're continually going off the screen and being reset to the center. Oh, I guess. Yeah, 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 right, right. right. That, that was their position. position. We okay. simulate them off. Yeah. So just, just to render this page, yeah. 60 frames a second, what we do here is it's on a simulation for every single one of these. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we can't do this across. I mean, we, we should work on the algorithm, but yeah. uh, every one of these has to run potentially up to a thousand steps of simulation just to figure out where they should appear stationary. And because of that, we might go into the dashboard some and just delete all the data so that our rendering speed is better. Yes, we could. We could do that. Um, Are you okay? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No. No. So I'm, 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 I'm going, going back to, to uh, doing some people. I'm doing this meta stuff. Meta stuff. Uh, we have. What's this line? We are saying if it hits the bottom, and uh, this is the absolute value of the velocity uh, squared, uh, and that's less than one. Okay. So we're at the bottom. We're not moving very fast. We're done. Uh, return new ball. Okay. And now, if the new ball is in the future, we have reached the present. Okay. Step 10 in this argument. That's a good question. DT. Okay. So that's the number of seconds or oh, in milliseconds? milliseconds. I okay. guess. If it, if it is a real thing. Uh, okay. And this, this does gravity. So it's gravity. Yeah, yeah and, and air resistance. It's line 21, 22. 21 and 22 are air resistance. Nice. Yeah, yeah or I guess, I guess this part's gravity. That's gravity. <laughs> this is air. Right, okay. right. So we got a 1% friction factor. Mm -hmm. Is that noticeable? Mm, there's a lot of echo here. Okay, okay. so maybe it's time to uh, not use two mics and try to just do one mic. Great, right. we, we were wondering, wondering about, about that. We, we didn't look at the chat. chat. Um, okay, so the question is, are, can, are, can we still be heard? Um, and then the other thing, why is it fuzzy? Oh, it's a good, these are all great questions. Um, and we can get better and better at streaming. Uh, why is the screen fuzzy with 10, hmm, huh. I don't know. Could be our latency, or, or like in the YouTube settings, we said make the latency, uh, what did we say? Medium, like like low latency, but not ultra low. 
Um, it could be that I'm using an, uh, what's it called, Elgato capture thing to go into this high resolution screen. Um, regardless, we should probably bump up our uh, the font size on these guys. Oh yeah, we can probably um, do that. I was thinking of reducing the resolution on the whole display. Oh, that's even a better idea. Uh, that's real smart. Extended display. Uh, It's already on the largest. <laughs> yeah, it's already on the largest. Okay. Yeah, that could got way better. Okay, thanks, Gwen. That's great. Um, is there still a little? Does what? Does not? Yeah, I'm curious when you say we got way better. You know, if, if, if there's some other source of it, but I, I think we should be good. I can mute this too. Um, are you in two machines or just one? Um, the left audio is way more than the right audio. Uh, Okay, that could be the way this is set up, and the way it's um, what's it's the pointing word? at you. Actually, we can see that. There's a little visualization of that right here. Oh, interesting. Um, can what we, if we twist it this way? What about now? No. Well, I still see see these lines here where yeah, one's right. much more. I bet there's a advanced audio properties where we just say, "Hey, uh, bump up the which side like that or something." Um, Oh, mono. How's that? Great. Now they're the same, <laughs> and you have no more, no more stereo. Um, Jamie would be disappointed, but but that seems good for now. Um, Thank you for all the feedback, guys. Yeah, this is great. It's minor. Well, is it better now, Pun? That's that's the real question. Um, also, it's great. I can we can respond to chat in in medium. Okay, it's good now. Great. Figure you. Out, we'll figure out that stuff at some other point. Um, okay, we were, okay. can you see the screen now? There's, there's a mic in your there way. There is a mic in the way, oh. but I can see it, especially if I move it to the center. So okay. I think we're good. Uh, yeah, so so you know Rust, right? Can we just can okay. we just make this be in Rust? Let's, um, let's try That's it. maybe not the first thing. I, should we just make sure we can run some? Uh, yeah, let's see if we can run Rust first. OK, great. Okay. Uh, so what's what's the kind of thing that we're going to run? Maybe let's try to set up a local server and just like make sure we can run. Um, we, so the goal is to be able to, we need to run the Rust on Convex, and we also want to run it in the browser. Mm -hmm. And we have a function in Golf. We have a function called add that we, we hacked together a build system for our Rust stuff yesterday. Um, for lines 10 and 9 and 10, we've got. Um, OK, and where is this coming from? See, we've got this temp thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't remember where that was. Might be able to command click on that. I think. I don't know the top. Oh, you're right. Cool. So this is loading this, and this is code that. So, so lines five and six are our Rust code. Um, encoded in a compiled yeah, encoded compiled in to WebAssembly. <laughs> right. And then encoded in some way so that it can be interpreted as a string. Right. So and we and should need base sixty four encoding it or something, but we are just uh, like JavaScript wrappering it, whatever that's called. Um, just like it's not too string, but is but um, and then build.mjs is our build script. Okay. So this is the thing we need to invoke. I got as far as change like adding a shebang, but I forgot to change the file permissions of this thing. So, oh, okay. so if, we can as we're setting up your like the the system we'll use see to if build we can it. Run it. Yeah. All right. Uh, OK, so we want to run it? I guess, yeah. And I think the input file is hard-coded, but the output file is not, so you'll have to pipe it somewhere. Hello, awesome. OK, so the input file is coming in from here. Right. Which is, which is the WebAssembly, which is compiled. OK. And the output goes to console.log. So we pipe it to a file, such oh, as. Oh, that's great. Um, um, Quinn says he's. I was just imagining Quinn that you were. I just. I just figured that you were right out there. I forgot you're on vacation. Thanks for. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good <laughs> layover. Uh, okay. Sorry. So we're we're piping it to temp. Yeah. Right now it's time. We can start calling it something better. Okay. Um, but it is this one that I can override. Yes, it is that one. Yep. Yep. Right. 
Uh, okay, look how we tried it. Some such file directory as, uh, oh, okay, we've got to compile the um, Rust code first. Okay. Because I did remove it from, actually, I don't, I didn't, I don't think I did. I thought I removed this from the .git ignore in pkg. Is there some stuff? Yeah, it should be right there. Uh, so what was that? Yeah, this is our beautiful, uh, I don't know where it went. Okay, uh, so we've got build. this. Build tries to look for, what was our error message? No such file or directory uh, package. Hello, wasm bg. That's that's what that is. I don't know. Try is it a file directory thing? We're in ball shoot. Oh, we oh. ran it from here. Um, yeah, okay. The hard coded thing is a relative path, which we should <laughs> uh, do better with. Uh, we can just change that. Uh, or sorry, I I say we. I can just change that while you're working on this. Um, okay. What's what in the build script? I'm gonna. Right, it recompiled. Uh, how it. does this work? Oh, great, cool. Uh, and so that I know how we can recompile it again, let's put the command running for that. Delete this one. OK, so this is how we are compiling the Rust. Right. OK, and the Rust code is in here. So this may be familiar to Rust people. This is a crate. We've got some code. Cargo. Huh. I'm. I just copied in the normal Stack Overflow code for. Uh, uh, what's it called? Actually, how? Yeah. Can Can you follow me here somehow? How do we gotta learn our hotkeys, but there's some way that like. Yeah, we're gonna get the the proper like two of us running at the same time. It's gonna be great. Um, invite. I'm already focused. Yeah. Other po oh no, I don't want to follow you. Follow me. Uh, oh, I can do that though. Yeah. Uh, request follow live share. Oh, that's for me following you. What? Um, can you try that? Uh, Command Shift P follow uh, live space follow. Command Shift, oh, Command -shift P, P. Yeah. Follow. Live share probable participant. Cool. Great. Uh -huh. So now I can hop over here. Great, and you're following me. I was saying that I, sorry, I interrupted you to say, hey, I copied in this code um, mm -hmm. that gets a file name. Oh, that's funny. Um, file name equals all this junk. These are four line, five lines that I just copied from the internet that I have copied a lot from the internet. And we don't need all of them. We don't need the dir, oh, I guess the dir name's interesting. Um, there's a dir name of file name. Great, I don't need this. Um, but this was just to do path.join. Let's get path from file as well. Um, import path from path. And let's, I think there's a path.join, right? Uh, let's join the dir name that this script is in mm -hmm. with that. Maybe that will help. Um, we got an extra parenthesis. Right here? No. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, no, go for it. Go for it. We're, we're collaborating. <laughs> All right, so I, I I hope this would work. Um, the okay. thing that you were doing before. Sorry, back to so you though. Let's, yeah, let's so you try to run it again. Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. So we've got hello wasm. Yes, that worked. Okay, so now we have a two-step build process. I guess we compile the Rust to WebAssembly like this. Oh, this one. Yeah, but this is there. this is sorry, I'm not talking to chat. Um, telling the new point, yeah, this is the shared cursor thing, and it's it's real sweet. Um, it's I'm a fan. Sorry, yeah, go we're, ahead. Uh, yeah, so we're using done. VS Code's built-in, sort of built-in sharing. Yeah, so the two-step process is we build Rust to WebAssembly, and then we run our own little hacky thing. To oops. to uh, compile the WebAssembly to JavaScript, which is probably cool. not the intended use of WebAssembly. But it does work. Yeah, it works. Great, yeah. So and this is because we don't have a great bundle. Like, we, we still need to write get ESBuild to bundle our code appropriately. Uh, this would work mm -hmm. fine locally doing it the normal Rust way, or what, what's it called, WasmPack? Yeah. What, um, normal WasmPack way. But it would be an issue when we're Sending this up to Convex, where we use that like a pre-configured ES build that 
Um, like I said, really the problem is that once you're in a convex function, you can't dynamically fetch that code, and that's the thing that would mm -hmm. be a problem. We just convex just wants to know about all the code you're going to run ahead of time, and that doesn't happen to be the way that Wasm pack packages it up. Yeah, I think Wasm pack distributes it and like uh, puts it on a server or something, and then you can fetch it from your JavaScript code, which yeah. is supposed to. So there's built in. There's a nice like, what is it called? Um, so what, what's how do this? I solve in, it? In build. Uh, temp.mjs. Temp so when we're in here, um, we could, instead of this stuff, we could be saying web assembly dot uh, instantiate streaming. And that's kind of what you're supposed to do. And you just put a URL in here. Because oh. WebAssembly as a format is specifically defined such that you can stream it in. Like it is, it is possible to start really? compiling it as it's going. So it's got all its header stuff up front, and then you start to get to the code, and we start to compile these different pieces. So the mm. goal is that you can combine your network latency with your, or, you know, your network, the time you're waiting. Pipeline it. Or yeah. The, yeah, yeah, pipeline it. Um, but we're not doing that because we've just got the whole thing right here. So that's fine. Uh, but I okay. guess that's why they push people in the mm -hmm. fetch it dynamically direction. OK. So I think um, maybe let's uh, try to connect the golf thing to the WebAssembly. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, so what, wh what do we want to? I guess let's run a. I would say let's run a dev server so we don't have to like push. So Vercel is going to always reflect what we have pushed at GitHub. Mm -hmm. And so we can iterate faster. Let's start a local dev server, okay. which we could do so and catch another NPM terminal run here. Dev. Yeah, should do it. Oops. NPM run dev. Right, and now All we right. should have a local host to do something with. Local host 3000. Okay. Every time you open it, it spawns a new ball that yes. appears here. Um, yes. Okay. And and also notice that even though this is a local server, um, it's still got the same data. Right. We are sharing our prod database here with everybody. Um, everyone, can, everyone can hop in. Wee. I'm playing with myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's try to in. Now that we've got that there, we could write some code that does something, and I don't know. We could we could even stick it in the simulation now and uh, like write a no op function or a function that adds. We have an add function already. We yeah. already wrote it. Let's let's see can if we, we can use can it. Can we use it? Let's find something. To I'm add. sure that'll be faster. Let's uh, find maybe we can add these two things. Yeah, so that looks great. Uh, okay. Instance dot. Oh, right, yeah. Here, I can. we can write some TypeScript magic to make, make this a little nicer. Um, gosh, how do I follow you again? Follow. Command option F. OK. Command option F. Great. Hop nice. to where you are. Um, I'm up at the top of the file. I'm adding a little, uh, whoa, three, um, yeah, a const like add equals uh, instance.exports. And that should pull these out. And oh, why is it declared? Oh, I see. Sorry, you had it. Sorry, I'm just taking your same code. <laughs> um, but yeah. look, but I'm using need, my expansion types. stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, let's get our types. Um, and gosh, then the w your syntax was better then, because I'm just going to say dot add as a function that takes two parameters and returns another one number and the syntax for that, something like this. That's Great. good. OK. And now this type checks. So we're all happy. Great. Uh, I guess let's see if it runs. Yeah. Maybe we can add it to something. Oh, is this no longer working? Oh, that's that's the same thing as before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's add it to the live path if we can. Actually, how do I stop following? Because now I want to command shift P follow, unfollow. Oh, it's just the same thing again. Command option F. This is so great. OK. OK. Um, so we've got add. Maybe we can uh, I'm gonna take out these two lines or just hope it works. OK. Uh, we've got add. And we want to call it from golf. We also maybe it would be cool to see if we can call it from another function that this imports. Because this one is in convex. But it also imports functions that are not in convex, uh, like Where's the simulation code? Current position. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, step. Where's step? Step. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, like Here. 20 years in Isaiah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, 23. Here's an ad. I guess we should. Okay, I'll, I'll help by copying that file over. Um, where is this? This stuff. What, what file is this? Simulation. Uh, simulation. Great. Let's. So I can see you at the top. It's our first imports. Let's. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. I don't know why it doesn't like that. Probably because we're oops. in a relatively different spot. Yeah. Um, oops. Dot slash this. Dot uh, convex slash that stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll figure that out later. Or I guess we'll figure that down. Unused. What's? Oh, it's just because it's unused. Oh, mine says it doesn't have an exported thing called oh, that. Also that. Um, huh. So I'm grabbing it from the wrong spot. I think it might here. be a generic ID or something. Have you have we run code yet? Have you done a push yet? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Oh, now it's happy. That's fine. <laughs> it oh. changed its mind. Oh, okay. not for you. Um, yes, okay, in simulation. So in here it works fine from generated, but here, oh, dot slash, there we go. That's the problem. It was it was doing an NPM oh, like, look okay. up there and complaining. Um, great. Cool. Okay, so we have this, and it's getting very angry at me. Puna has a bunch of good questions when, when we Ooh, have a sec. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do it. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Complaining about Windows, I agree. We're Windows buddies, although he does most of the work. Um, what is instance.exports? Should we talk about WebAssembly a little bit? Um, sure. I'd like got, to learn. Uh, yeah, which file do we want to be looking at? Um, let's look at the generated code. We Don't worry so much about our hack together build system. Um, this one? When, well, the the JavaScript code. <laughs> we so let's look at this first. So this is some JavaScript. This is some WebAssembly. It's more than we need. Uh, it seems like. Wasm pack, the Rust tooling that we're using, adds a bunch of header stuff. And then like one, two, three, four, five bytes of this are code, because it's a stack-based machine. And we push, you know, we have an add function. So we yeah, push. And the add it. function remembers this. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so our add function is in there somewhere. But as is normal, it's like when you make a hello world binary, there's all that stuff in there. Um, we've got all this. I think it's, I don't know, where do you think? There it is. We'll add. That's in the export section. Somewhere higher up. Uh, oh wait, I could just open that so file too. So it exports too. it by yeah, name, add. right? Because that's how JavaScript does things. Yes, right, okay. right. And right before that, the code we can't see here, where it says uh, two. Oh, what is it? Um, the right before that, seventy nine. I forget this stuff. I had I had a trick video where I memorized this stuff, and I don't know oh, anymore. This is, this is memory. But the the gist is. And then this is three bytes. Okay. I see. Okay, memory entry. So that's another export. Okay, so we have two exports in this case. Um, we they thought that we needed to export a me like a linear memory because oh. if we had interesting like things like strings, then we'd need to be passing pointers to those you know, pointers. Um, okay, where, where did the rest code go? It's uh, over here. Yeah. So if we made this be like plus one. Yeah. Then cool. that might be in the linear memory. Yeah. The, well, the constant um, one. I don't. It could. They could choose to do that, but I think instead they would put it in um, just as a like a constant in the um, maybe he referenced in the, it in like multiple places. They might. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or it was a big number or something. Definitely, if we put a string somewhere, they put that in linear memory. Um, okay. But you don't actually have to expose the linear memory. That's the part that I was surprised by. That like that's only if you want JavaScript to be able to reach into your memory. You know, everything's shared by default. You have one big array of memory, and JavaScript can just access it at any time, which is a little funny. Um, but so okay. so earlier on here, I think we had some header stuff like somewhere I don't know somewhere in here it says this is the export I think ten says this is the exports section and we have two is we have two exports the first one mm -hmm. is going to okay. be some memory or no this is six. the size six six D means memory and then or maybe it's maybe this I don't know six so D is like probably well six D starts spelling memory. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, something. Anyway, somewhere this is an export section where it's doing that stuff. Our code is somewhere higher up here. Where? Uh, um, could you search this for uh, zero B? <laughs> Does search work? Um. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, 
Okay, well, somewhere in here there's some code. Okay, we're, sorry, let's ask the answer his question, which was, where is, like, what's going on here? What is Insta.exports? Oh, exports? Be. Great, so that is the end of our code <laughs> section. Okay. So uh, this, um, oh, what is this? 0, 020, 0, 021, so, so 6A is add. Okay. Um, 20 is uh, the first argument, or okay. you know, take, push, like push push an argument onto yeah. the stack, the zeroth argument. The next one is push another argument onto the stack, the, oh, the okay. second parameter, and then, right? add. and then add those two, consume those two on the stack and replace it with the sum of them. Right. And then whatever is on top of the stack is the return value at the end. Yep. And zero B is um, we are done with the code section. That's the only real code in here. The rest of this is just header you know, metadata stuff. Okay, so we found the function. Yeah, we found the function, we did it. <laughs> we focused on our successes. Um, but then Putin asks, what is instance.exports? And that is uh, was just the, the JavaScript, JavaScript API. Yeah, I guess let's look at our, let's look at ours, because this is, this, con this is complicated. Um, oh, this is not, we're not using this one at all. Right, right. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you got it, yeah. All right, so if we're looking at this, the gist is what? Um, Right, this is just getting our code. Yeah, this uh, is exactly the same as the hex we were just right, looking at. Right, it's just the JavaScript uh, representation of it. Uh, then we build an array. We tell JavaScript, really, I want this to be contiguous memory, not a string. Contiguous, mutable memory. Um, and we say uint eight array to say this is, um, yeah, with the way that we're going to address it is, is, yeah. eight, is one and byte there is a time. simpler way than what we did here. It's, I think, using text encoder, but we right. couldn't. Uh, Convex doesn't support text encoder. Yet. We'll, 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 we'll get that. it in there, but but uh, for the moment, this works great. <laughs> <laughs> for every byte that we tried, yes, it works. We tried all 256 of them. Yeah, and we looked at most of them. <laughs> uh, and okay, so the question was so we, we built this array. Interesting two lines here are let's uh, take, I don't know which parts happen in compile and which parts happen in instantiate, but it seems like the stuff that you'd only need to do once is going to happen in compile. So let's build native assembly code to correspond to that all that web assembly code. And then in here, let's actually create in instantiate, let's create some objects that actually like correspond to this. And these are you know, mutable JavaScript objects that we could we could create multiple of these instances, and they would have separate memory arrays, and so they could have separate state. If we maybe each one of these, you know, these are not just pure functions necessarily because they can reference that that linear memory array. Okay. So if there were global variables in our Rust that were mutable, can you even do that? Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> bad idea. So we wouldn't do it. But if there's state in there, it's going to sit in there. Um, and so the instantiate is creating, so module is all the information you would need in order to create this stuff, but you actually have to reserve that linear memory. Line okay. 11 is when we actually reserve that memory and then create this instance thing. Instance has an exports field on it, and that's where there are two properties, add and memory. Add is a function that we defined, and memory is a linear buffer or something um, that, that we could look at. Um, memory. Yeah. It might even know. Well, it just owns as an export value. That's not very good. But we could say const memory equals this as, I bet it's, uh, and this is where you're not supposed to use TypeScript when you're just guessing, but I, I bet that it gives you a, like a, um, an array buffer. And why don't you like that? Might be a mistake. No, I promise. As unknown as, as void star, as array buffer. It's probably an array buffer, um, but we should check that for sure. Wait, why did you have to cast it through unknown for this one, but not this one? It's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, so it, it says there are no base, I, what is it? No base, I don't know the type theory. No, there's no way you could cast this down and then one's not a subset of the other. Hmm, I don't okay. know the type theory words, but. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either, yeah. All right, uh, I'm, I'm compiler speaking compilers, adding do numbers is a huge binary. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, what does the, where does it come from? Oh, we just told you. Oh, cool, you copy pasted the string. Yeah, that is cool. It hacks, <laughs> but works, cool. Sorry, we're just reading. Uh, this is a person I value a lot, so sorry, stream. I have to take the time to read all of these. Uh, Wasm ergonomics needs some work. Yeah, they and, and the ergonomics are better in some other ways, but but yeah, yeah, they do need, they need some work, especially in this system. All right, so we, we've got this working. We've what we think, right? We have an add function. Have we run yes. it in a browser yet? We have not run it. Let's okay. see if 
Uh, uh, so this, this sort of still works. This is showing several errors, so mm, I'm going to see if okay. it still shows errors if I do this. Is it running? Mm, I think so. Top level await experiment. Okay, so let's we got to stop top level awaiting. Okay. Um, so this is going to work on the back end where we do have top level await, but the way that we're compiling this code, like the bundler I'm using, I guess, but I chose to use for ball shoot okay. with next or whatever, it doesn't like it. So what we have to do here is just wrap this stuff in a function, okay. an async function. But we can't just do it. We have to do it in our, I mean, we ought to do it in our build script. Okay. Um, right. Because this is generated code. Right. Right. Okay. So, so let's. What was that called? Build? Yeah. yeah so build. in here, now the gist is. Uh, should we just do. We'll just do the whole thing. So the simple transformation is function open thing here. Cl is that a close? Cool. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what. Uh, oops. I usually see it done like this. Oops. I close there and then open close here. Um, Hmm. Except that I've got to get those that are now local variables, so I've got to get them out somehow. So let's return the instance. Um, return that. Okay. And then down here, we're so going to we... export uh, this code function. Ex we'll do it here. Export const, we'll call it get instance. And that is, oh, wait, wait, what am I doing? Um, no, hmm. I forgot. We're generating code. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Got to do that down here. So it used to say export that. Now we're gonna. Oh, we have to. We, we can't. We can't run it in line because I mean we could do this, but then we need to. We need to do this. Yeah, so promise. that was not gonna work. Um, we could, but I would say let's just call it where where we're using it. So let's just say. Okay. Function. You know, get instance, this stuff, yeah. And that is the code we will generate, and now we'll have to import it in a, a different way. Okay. Um, so maybe let's try generating it, look at it, because I bet okay. I'll Okay, so the reason I, I thought maybe we'd want it as a promise is to avoid compiling it multiple times. Oh, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, should we do that? <laughs> that I, seems uh, smart, let's do that. So we're gonna have a global, a, a, a promise, yeah, yeah, thinker. Okay. Um, so instead of having a function, let's export const uh, instance p, the convention for saying this is going to be a promise, oh, okay. equals let's run this function. Oops. Oh, we want to get rid of what this return thing is doing. Do, 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 do. Some of these are unnecessary. That's probably right, right? Wrap the function and then call it. Yeah. OK, great. And that's the, OK, so we're going to run our build script and then uh, mm, I don't know. Oh, I, we've got to make it async. Glad we glad we looked. Save. Try it again. I guess we should just run a watch function. Um, could you take? Uh, hmm. What now? Okay, well now it, that's a promise. So we need to go change our code to yep. both the places we used this. One of the places we used it was in Gaul. And so now we're importing git instance. And we'll have to say, I wonder if we have top level await anywhere. Um, it's called get instance. I think so. Is that what we called it? I thought it was instance p. Uh, yes, you're right, instance p. Um, OK, this is going to be annoying. I think, well, shoot. <laughs> um, Gosh, this has got to be a standard thing. Because now we, it, so this is the whole, like, async code is is a virus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, red, red and black function. Right, red and right. Blue function. Um, we really, we can't run this code until. Um, until we're in an async. Yeah. Framework. Right. So. So why couldn't it run before? Why could or why couldn't it? Why could it not? When when it was throwing an error about it being top level await. Mm. So it couldn't because it tried to when when this code tried to import. Um, okay, so it's the stuff. imports that don't allow async stuff. Yeah, and it should be okay now. Uh, or I mean, the, the imports are okay. We can get the promise in here. Now the problem is that our types don't match, and then I'm saying 
well, sure, what we want to do is say const instance equals await the instance p. And if we try right. to run this, I think, right, where it's even telling us, like, whoa, whoa there. Um, oh, yeah. So oh, what's the appropriate thing to do here? I think we should look at our uh, how we're building. The, so so is this, a, this is probably a next app, I bet, right? Let's look. Yeah, it should be a next app. Um, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm going to old reliable Google. Um, uh, top level await and next because there's a config file somewhere we have to change. Um, you have to set it in Maybe great. node next. Um, looks like we can do it. Uh, I'm just copying code here. Here, I'll, here I'll, I'll, um, you have to use it outside the function. Blah, 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 whatever. Um, what's the file next config? Is that a thing? Uh, Next.config.js. Next.config. Do we have one of those? Do we have to make one? I'm going to make one out here. New file. Gosh, I don't know how to use VS Code. How do I make a new file? New file. Next.config.js. And we put some stuff there. And then we look at the date of the Stack Overflow question. And it is July, one year ago. Um, maybe, sure. Uh, save, restart the dev server. So just, I just control C and, and I, I think it won't reload config file changes automatically. Oh, really? I think. Uh, okay. And now get the code to run somehow so we can see our error. All right. What are our errors? Okay. This is this is. Actually, what does the error say? Can't read properties of undefined. Okay, okay. I think this is better. Yeah. Okay. I think we just did it. I forget what we were doing. Um, right. right. Well, we got to update these. So uh, it still doesn't like unline it. Oh yeah. Which file is this about though? There's two files. Maybe it's simulation. If you scroll to the top, which which file is it complaining about? Um, Oh, simulation. Great. We haven't changed that one yet. Oh, right. Um, get, oh, you're right. Instance P. Great. We could just do it in there now. It doesn't, I mean, we should, oh, sorry. This is, this is, let's fix the code. Um, we don't need all this junk and we don't need to await. It's this just there now. Let's, let's just P. change the generator oh. code. Uh, build. Oh, right. Okay. So we're changing this so it's no longer returning promise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just, let's just. Um, change it back. Const, yeah. Uh, in fact, even this code can be so. All this fancy stuff. We we don't need that. We can just do top level awaits now. Is that correct? Uh oh, I don't. I can't redo. Oh, there it is. Maybe. Can we try to build again? Cool. Okay. And now if I look at temp, it looks OK. Great, with some top level awaits. Hey. Oh, it works. Great. OK. Ooh, and not only does it is it working, it's it, is, it should be calling the function, right? I think so. Or it's. <laughs> you have different semantics. It's, 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 what, what changed? Uh, we're using <laughs> integer math now instead of float. Oh, nice. <laughs> so <laughs> that would explain it. Oh, it's great. Look at that. Look at this. It, I, I love it. <laughs> but it's it's using integer math on the client, but we're st we still haven't pushed it to the server yet. OK. All right. All right. So moment of truth. Sure. Let's push our integer math to the server. Can you do this from a subdirectory? Uh, no, you can't. We should okay. fix that, because um, it's, it's fairly obvious what you mean. Mm, okay, we just didn't update at all, maybe. Golf, oops. Golf, golf. Instance P, I loaded all this junk. Let's go back to instance and get rid of this. Why was it working locally? Man? Uh, this is the context function. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, give that a shot. Okay. Uh, yeah, anything I need to recompile? 
No, no not, not Rust, I don't think. Okay. okay. It, all right. <laughs> I love the little drop. <laughs> yeah, once it, once it stops being able to make an integer out yeah. of it, it goes to zero. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, should we switch it to use flows? Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> cool. Yeah, let's. It'll be fun to see. It. Can we take a, like a make a copy or take a screenshot of the? I mean, I, I, it's not really important, but I'm interested in like how the compiled code will change. I think it's just going to be one byte, well, two bytes. Um, in here. Yeah, let's. Uh, well, I can copy it. Sweet. Uh, Hello, Wasm something. Smart, yeah, because it'll probably take that out. Okay. Cool. And then we do our Rust build again. Okay, so now we're changing it. So we yeah. we changed the Rust. All oh, right, we changed the Rust code. Yeah, how do you do floats in Rust? Ah, it's very well, advanced. There are two ways. Uh -huh. You can do float 32, I think. Or float sixty four. All right, Wasm experts, which one do we want? What? I don't. I mean, one of these they might both be supported, or maybe just one is. Oh, you're confused about F sixty four. Oh, F sixty four. Okay. Um, I don't remember which ones we have in Java. Oh, uh, of course they're port sixty four because JavaScript numbers are. Yeah, every right? every JavaScript number is yeah, F sixty four, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this should work. Let's let's see if it can compile. have our webpack. OK, so now we've compiled it, and we now have the new, let's let's see. And uh, how can I open the other one? Yeah, whatever differ you got. OK, cool. Um, I think you could probably drag the file. Yeah, drag that into here. Perfect. Cool. At least we can tap back and forth and find the difference. OK. Well, first, I see there's more empty space after the add, I think. Oh. Oh, no, there isn't. Never mind. OK, so I think our there's changing bytes are going to be right uh, after the add, right? Uh, oh, I forget where the code was. Well, you said. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. Zero B so it's still an code. add. This is twenty zero twenty one, and I bet so it will that's be the same. Oh no, that's that's what it was. Okay, so this twenty zero twenty one. It looks the same. But then a zero maybe is floating point addition. Oh okay, yeah yeah okay right. Okay, so it changed one byte. Great. Nice. Okay, <laughs> hopefully that was a good byte. <laughs> yeah, let, let's hope that that was the right byte for it to change. Okay, so what's what's the next step? We compile it to JavaScript. Let's do it, yeah. And uh, it's probably fine. Probably just does it. Yeah, we'll just see if our, oh yeah, you're going to push. Very reasonable. So that our, our client, our server don't disagree. No, I am not. Oh, it wants you to be one level up. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, great, great. Whoa. <laughs> so we're doing it. <laughs> it's working exactly the same as it was before. Yeah. But maybe a tiny bit faster. I bet it's a little slower because we've got a, like, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how this, this, this goes. Um, Whoa. Yeah, so we could fix, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff we could do here. Um, we can convert a significant amount of this to Rust, which would I would be excited about because I can always do some Rust practice. Sure. Um, yeah. Do you want to, do you want to do that? Uh, sure, yeah, you. yeah. Let's have the slower person do Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I want to say, OK, OK, I'll give it a shot. It's not the slower person. Um, it's the, let's it's see. the person who's learning. Right, that's true. That's true. We're all learning together. Um, so I want to look at our dot .rs code. This, great. Mm -hmm. I wish that this looked more like, uh, could you do a split on here? Or maybe make this I bigger and then uh, drag. Uh, I don't split. know. Uh, well, actually, maybe my splits apply to you. I don't know. Let's see. I was going to try to 
I was doing it just by, if you drag these from up there, you can get them in here. Ooh, okay. So which one do we um, want? Simulation, simulation, I think, yeah. And live. Yeah, exactly. I guess that is this one, so. Er, there. Oh, okay, yeah, great, great. Okay, yeah, so I'm looking at this, and I'm just wishing that in here it looked more like this. Yes. So I guess let's write a function. Let's go straight for it, right? Let's write step. Now I know how to split the screen. Pub function step takes, um, ooh, I have some interesting data structures here. Oh. As long as our IO is just numbers, we should be fine. Okay. Um, but it does seem like it takes two numbers <laughs> to describe that position. Um, okay, so what does step do? So step you can define, you can define structs. Sure, yeah, yeah, we've work. got, I think that'll be, oh, I see. I think it's not gonna work in, oof. So something we could do <laughs> is define the function and then run it twice and return <laughs> the, the x the first time and the y the second time. But that's uh -huh. my hacky brain working. Um, the right thing to do is return a pointer into linear memory in the WASM. Mm -hmm. So we say, look at index seven. That is where you could read the next, the next 16 bytes represent two eight bit or eight byte floating point numbers. Mm -hmm. um, interpret them as such. X is the first one, Y is the second one. Okay. Um, but. <laughs> so what would happen if we just wrote this, the Rust let's find equivalent out. of that? Let's, let's find out, yeah. yeah. Um, should I try, really try to write? Yeah, let's, let's, let's try to do it a bit. Yeah. Um, step, this so is a thing it. that was gonna take, yeah, let's define some structs, right? Yeah. Struct, is that a thing? Yep. And then uh, what is in a ball? It looks like it's all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I bet I don't do anything with the color, so I'm just gonna pretend the color's not here. Sounds good. Um, these are all gonna be, what were we saying, F64s. Mm -hmm. And it's a comp between them. Oh, cool. Oop, let me jump it all around. You've got your Vim bindings on, right? I mean, I need to set up Vim for VS Code. Oh okay. yeah, you should. You should. Um, okay, the, 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 great. And I, just, I get like a free cons like a constructor for the struct and everything. Uh, yes. Cool. So this as an argument takes a ball, which is one of those. Is that the syntax? Yeah. And uh, a f64. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to return is another ball. Mm -hmm. um, I That's hope it. I'm not abusing identity in here to do anything. It doesn't look like uh, I am, maybe. Um, so right now, the way that step works is. Uh, yeah, so a step takes a ball. Mm -hmm. um, if we need to give up, we just return the ball, okay. like the original one, not yeah. a new object. And then down here in- Well, this one is modified. Uh, yeah, you're right, it is modified. Um, but I do, so, okay, current position. If you look at where current position calls, okay, new ball. There's a line of code at, I don't see that line of code. We're fine. Never mind. I was worried I'd have a line. Of, oh, no, no. Line 52. That's a problem. Hmm. Okay. So what? Um, what actually, no, that's not a problem. Um, never mind. I was worried. That I was looking for in double equals. I was worried there was going to be a point where I look to see if it returned the same object. Okay. Well, you and can I do don't that see in Rust, that. too. Like, uh, so one thing you can well, do when you define a struct. I don't mm, know if this whole. No, right. Yeah, Maybe yeah. we should avoid things that are likely not to work. Um, but you can derive some properties of the struct. So. For example, you can have equals. Uh, oh, cool. Which but but the thing is, the, the, the equal that I would want is not a normal Rust equal. It is an object identity. Like, I'm doing uh, funny mutable object stuff in JavaScript. OK. But it doesn't look like I am. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I was just worried about the like the interop, where like if we're going to only write step in Wasm, but mm -hmm. I, I think we're fine, though. Um, OK, let's give it a shot. Uh, sorry, I'm supposed to be writing this code. Um, Takes a ball, found, how do you pronounce open close paren? Unit? Yes. Okay. I think. Found unit. All right. So we'll just, uh, okay. Take some of this code. Um, is there a, a multi, can I declare multiple variables on one line like this somehow? Um, oh, but actually, no, I'm just, ex I'm just expanding this out. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Can I even do it destructuring me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Like this? Something like this? Like that. 
Cool. Oh, great. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, great. Then the next thing I want to do is check some bounds. Um, if our x is less than x, what are x min and x max? x min looks like they're just some constants I have floating around. Uh, I'm just going to do stuff like this, right? Zero. Yeah, I think it, so. Let is a uh, oh yeah yeah const right const yeah cool const y min is zero and const yeah feel free to y max is five hundred yep and we need to have types as well oh yeah because integers don't sure natively have types u sixty four all around no no not not u f sixty four all around. Cool. Great. Okay. And um, back to what were we doing? An if statement. I'm just going to copy this. Cool. This feels like it's so close. Um, if, I bet or works the same way. I bet that this is the same. I bet there's a better syntax for min, right? Mm -hmm. Is it min? Uh, yes, maybe. Um, it's definitely, sometimes you need to fully qualify it. So CMP. Mm. min and then we have to import the cmp library cool i bet if i just type cmp slowly cmp nope i don't have the right rust tooling installed how do i import cmp uh so what i do is i click on it and then do command dot i don't know if that requires some rust tooling command dot convert to yeah it looks like oh it does, work. does okay okay yeah cool um maybe this just works or it, something's very not happy about Oh, let's. Well, it wants you to return false. Okay. Um, at the end. Oh, at the end. Oh, okay. Well, just to keep it happy, because I don't like the red return ball here. Mm -hmm. um, and the the rust for doing that is. Oh, false. right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, you don't. Oh, that. Uh, yeah. You can't compare floats. What? Interesting. I want to compare floats, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess you can't compare floats because there are edge cases where comparison doesn't work, like hmm. NAN. Is there a, an unsafe one where I can say, if it's NAN, do whatever? Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, we can look that up. Uh, I think there should be a way to do it. OK. Compare yeah, floats. there's a total yes. comp. Oh, look at that x min you can there there are methods this is a little funny but apparently i can say x max oops dot min mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of fun that's pretty neat like operator loading overloading except it's very explicit mm -hmm. but it's yeah. not operator overloading it's and just then the methods. other the other way that it was saying you could do is like float 64. yeah that's maybe better if you do that um they're probably both the same yeah, i feel more comfortable <laughs> with that the methods are funny. Methods feel too much like Ruby to me. Ah, uh, OK. Uh, OK, so th what was this? Fl FLT? F64? F, right, 64 dot min. Uh, colon, colon. Right. That's how it's based qualifier thing. OK. Yep. And F64 colon colon max, all right? And now we don't have to. So to keep to move our code over, maybe it'd be mm -hmm. nice to do it mute. Sure. Right. Just for. Yeah. Uh, so. So let mute here. No. Um, uh, oh. This one. Oh, we have to take it in as mute. Okay. Right. Right. Cool. And no. now. Oh, it's because it's a pub function. This needs to be a pub struct. Oh, smart. This is all okay. reasonable stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to copy five lines of JavaScript, and they're just going to work. Awesome. Right? Um, um, we don't have to. I think this needs to be mute. Uh, 
signed to and never read. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll use them in a bit. Yeah, and then also delete this for me. So it's great. Just just write code and then have a super smart compiler friend that, that sticks with it. Um, yeah. This seems reasonable. And then this, I'm just going to change it to say ball that. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a, a spread syntax? I maybe what is the point here? Try two dots. Try putting it at the end. And get rid of the comma. Uh, cool. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Nice. OK, so that's our code. Yep. Um, but we're going to have problems. Uh, why, why is this sad? Go to ball, expected a ball. That is a ball. Remove the semicolon. There we go. Yeah? We got some code? OK. I didn't I'm use surprised anything. it's not complaining about this thing. Hmm. Um, because Rust has a very specific idea of ownership. So when you destructure the ball, I would expect that you are no longer allowed to use the ball. Um, but it, it appears that it's actually working. Hmm. OK. Is that because I'm past the last use of those pieces when I run my ball code? See, hmm. oh, I see. No, no, you're right because I'm doing it right here. Well, if it's not complaining, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see what code this gives us. Okay. And I think it's going to generate. Uh, actually, could we look at the that wrapper function that we're not using? Mm -hmm. um, that's what I think is going to get a lot bigger. This thing. Yeah. So right now that's it's my got guess. init, some init memory stuff. Blow yeah. Up. I and mean, we're already exporting the, the linear memory, which is good. But I think that it, it, you know, we're about to export a function which um, returns some kind of struct thing. And it's mm -hmm. going to have to generate code to make JavaScript objects or something. Yeah. OK. So try it out? Yeah, let's try it out. All right. Build. Ooh, it compiled. Oh, um, we should probably export this function. Oh, yeah. With Watson binds in. Then compile it. Oh, this time it doesn't like it. Well, that's not a very helpful. Error. It's not very helpful. Why? Why did it fail? I bet we have to export the struct somehow too, based on that tutorial we looked at once oh, it, upon a time. It can't compile it due to. Due to oh, these, these things. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, great. That is that's reasonable. Wow, this is a lot. Okay. OK, so a couple of syntax errors with parentheses. Oh, thanks. Um, this is unused, so we get rid of it. I think that might have been a warning. Um, this is the error. Ooh. Ooh, OK, this is interesting. OK, so there's, right. there's another one of these taggy things we're supposed to put on top of that struct so that it satisfies some trait something probably uh, that's a great point do you have any idea how we would do that <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna go back to, to googling also I, I'm gonna have to get a charger I'm gonna run a battery here uh, what is you want to google over it I'm gonna go get some chargers uh, sure I'm not sure I have a charger I still want to out. okay so uh, I can Google it, but I am going to try, yeah, try to try guess. So the uh, the thing I'm guessing. So what what it's saying is we are trying to um, we are trying to return ha have a function that accepts a ball and returns a ball. Therefore, the ball needs to be needs to be able to be converted into WebAssembly binary code. Uh, and that, I would expect, comes in as this. Uh, OK, but it's only a trait doesn't have a derived macro. Oh, shoot, this is exactly what I should have been here for. Only a trait doesn't have a derived macro. Yeah. Uh, so a, a trait is a, in other languages, would be called an interface. It's like a spec. And uh, 
so it, it's like a set of functions and we can even take a look at what they are probably yeah so it uh, has a so it whatever this is I don't know what that is uh, it has some sort of associated type that's what that's called and then it has a function that you that gets converted okay so it can convert the binary to the the struct self in this case is the struct ball um, okay what is wasm avi it's a empty trait okay all right uh, i don't know if we'll be able to drive it so there there is a um, there's the tutorial. The so we started with an MDN tutorial yesterday mm -hmm. that had some information. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the documentation right now for mm -hmm. the tra oop, the trait that we have failed to implement. Mm -hmm. This is the. Web. Uh, this is. What's ABI stand for? Something about an interface binary. Um, yeah. Wasm binary, <laughs> but I don't know the A part. Um. I think of ABI is like encoding, binary encoding. Application binary interface. Okay, right, okay. right. Like API, A ABI, API, ABI. Mm, nice. So are we at the point where you tried to just stick Wasm bind gen on top of? Yes. The, okay. I great. Tried We've already done that. This. Cool. That didn't work. Uh, we could implement it ourselves. Like move some binary bytes around and. Yeah. What is it? What is the? Uh, is it? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Is there a suggestion on how we could do that? I guess we can look at the source for any of these implementations. What's the limit Wasm? The name of a trait is Wasm by Gen. Exporting a struct to JS. Great. Okay, I have some code on my computer. Don't know if it's. Okay. Uh, this is the tutorial that did not we were not able to use when we started, but but the information is probably still good. Okay. It says stuff like this. Oh. It's not huh. giving me all that's necessary, but. So this is. Okay, what we're looking at here is. If you have a struct like this. Yeah, we have a struct. Actually, maybe we should put this on the on the screen. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. I googled for. Oh, yeah, I can just send you the. Oh, if you look for wasm dash bind gen uh, exporting Rust struct. That one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I'm reading. Okay. So I guess we can try this. See if that just works. Oh, okay. Right. That might just work. Got it. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So the rest of this is when you have a, like, these are methods. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, great. Great. Maybe that does it. Cool. Okay. And uh, it's still not going to work, but it's it's going to compile. That's my hope. Let's hope. Now, the problem is going to be when we're unable to use the JavaScript bindings that it generates for us. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. We still got a couple warnings, but that's fine. None of them are important. Great. Okay. Okay. Let's look at let's look at that that beautiful uh, binary that we made. Okay. That's a binary. Okay. There's more stuff there. Whoa! It's huge. Okay. So I think we're probably pulling in some. I want to say sturdy, but like some some uh, some stuff that does stuff. Yes. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to look through here and find exactly yeah. the function. Right. Although right. maybe we will. Um, yeah, this, we need some. Cut off. It is cut off. Okay. I'm sure, those tools that parse it. Whatever. 
Okay. Yeah. So there's there, great. Okay. There's there's some code. Yeah. Um, I can't read that. By yeah. The way. Let's look at our let's look it. at our exports. Uh, okay. In, uh, I guess in in JavaScript or. Like oh, in we, in the associated maybe in the, JavaScript. Maybe in the browser even. Oh, oh yeah yeah I'm curious about this. Did this stuff get bigger? Okay. Well, we have a class now. Yeah, this definitely got bigger. And we have something. Okay, because it's it's so the Wasm it's module is manage, managing this memory, and so we have little free things and little like mm -hmm. like if it returns a pointer to it to JavaScript, it's still reading the memory of the thing in in there, which is uh, is okay, but we'd have to. Ooh. Okay. So here's our function step. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Great. And it takes in a ball. Great. Which is this. Cool. And it better be one of those, or it will complain. Yeah. Great. So we build one of those, either in JavaScript. No, definitely in JavaScript. So we build one of these in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, wrap a pointer. We have to have a pointer into a linear memory with which. And we call object.create on whatever this thing's prototype is. Mm. And apparently it knows where another thing is that it knows where it is is the, the object this is just like the the normal JavaScript syntax for oh, like, okay I mean not the, not the normal syntax but a way to do the same thing like calling new does mm -hmm. okay so where are the fields hmm so this seems to be just a wrapper that let's look at all that prototype I bet there'll be a bunch of setters and getters on that uh Um, or or Isn't this ball where it's dot, defined? yeah, and then down below we'll probably add on some stuff. It's like Rust. The impulse down below. Really? That's my guess. I don't see uh, it. Though. I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, huh. Well, we didn't define accessors. We didn't say. All we said was this is an object. Oh, I guess it has private fields. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, can we make them public? And will that expose them here? Maybe. I don't know. We can try. So that would be. Pub 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 pub. Yeah, or pub, 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 pub. That is fine. Great. Oh yes, it now has successors for X and Y. Hmm. Okay. Cool, but I don't really want to call accessors. <laughs> so okay, so we could get one of these objects. Uh -huh. It would continue taking up space in linear memory forever um, until we call free, I guess. Okay. So if we if we pass these into JavaScript, it is our job to free to them. Free them. Um, okay. And I, I, this is where it would be nice to just have, like I am, I am, I am tempted to go with, let's write code that, uh, let, like, let's have this function, mm -hmm. let's let this object never leave Rust, and let's have another two Rust functions called um, like one that does one that tells us oh but there's it's a bunch of values isn't it because we have to tell it step modifies the, the x and the y and the dx and the dy yeah uh, okay and we have to get all of those back out so that we can store them in convex right right, right. yes I think okay yeah okay so we will, we should be using this yeah I guess let's try to, to do this okay yeah you want to do the next step Sure. Okay. Yeah. What's <laughs> what's the plan? Um, yeah, we'll get one of these balls. In okay. So I just want to play with this in JavaScript because I'm I'm having uh, it's confusing for me to think about. Um, what's that? I'm following you. Actually, I think you might have to do this because um, what I want is uh, to like get this in a browser. Oh. Okay. So could we? Uh, let's so see. We how can this. we get these things exported? Um, okay, this is all temp. Could we, somewhere where we import this, can we stick, can we import temp and stick it on a global variable so we can interactively play with these in, in a JavaScript REPL? So I guess hmm. in, in simulation or in, um, um, I guess, I, well, yeah, yeah, in here would be fine. Um, just another line here, we could say uh, window equals, uh, or uh, we could pull it out, or we can say window, um, just so, so TypeScript doesn't complain, we might have to say open paren window as any. 
I'm oh, sorry, I, I'm just telling you to type, and I could type it right here. Um, dot. Uh, oh, this is a global variable. Dot, yeah, the global okay. variable. So dot dot uh, instance equals instance. Uh huh. Okay. So that gives it to us. Yeah, I'm thinking, and now we could save, and then we could hop into um, a JavaScript REPL. We could also just do this in Node, but. Um, uh oh, did our encoding fail? Our build function failed. Right, so I'm, okay, the problem is I want to um, do this, to, uh, shoot. All right, what is, what's our plan? <laughs> um, we now have code that won't work with our build thing. Why not? So because, oh, well, I, I think we want to use, um, hmm. we don't have that JavaScript that, that is, this is popping out. Oh. And if we don't have that JavaScript, then we like we, we can't play with it. And I, I don't think I think it would be pretty hard unless we're like byte, what do you call it, bit twiddling. Um, yeah. Unless we're bit hacking. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Unless we're bit hacking, um, it's going to be hard to look at that data and do anything with it. <sighs> uh, but even even considering that, this should not be failing. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's right. let's let's get things working. What's going on here? Um, oh, okay, that's that's what happened. So this util dot okay in our build script we use util dot something, okay, um, which is oh let's look at the build script build dot mjs, and in here we use util dot inspect to inject this thing in there. Mm -hmm. um, I but util dot inspect if it's the thing that the REPL uses, it cuts off after a thousand characters or something. Oh. <laughs> so it's not actually a way to stick this stuff in. Um, and so we should fix this script. Um, but, but again, this script is only useful if we're going to write functions that return single floats. So uh, we, should, we should still fix it, though. Yeah, yeah, let, let's, let's fix this. Um, what else do we have? Uh, util dot inspect does this thing all right oh sorry the, my, my pop the pop up doesn't come up over there we do need to work on the screen sharing the the oh, thanks um, a string representation intended for debugging um, may change at any time it should not be dependent on programmatically uh, so what if I do want what if the goal is JavaScript represent um, bytes What was the problem? So we need to ex. The problem is we have a range of bytes. Some are not safe to just dump in. How can you get the? Uh, is there a? So we could. Uh, we want something like. We could tones. encode it, and then pass it in as a array. Right. But we don't have a way to to make that a legal like JavaScript string for code. We have to turn. How can you have a have a have a bunch of bytes from zero to two fifty five? Um, and have a representation that you can stick inside of a like in source code. So what if we encode s and uh, number or, or code it was called code equals encode s and then code as is a backtick ASCII string. Yeah, backtick's not ASCII. Think right? Maybe I think back to is ASCII. It? Oh, okay. Because ASCII characters are all spoken for. We can't like. But I was thinking, could we like do you know stick this inside of a like this is not going to work because quotes are some of the. Oh, we could JSON. Okay, we should be JSON dot uh, take the string, JSON dot stringify. That's the right approach. Oh, yeah, that would probably yeah, work. That's the that's what we should have been. So not none of this util thing. Um, but this this should also work, right? Uh. How do you do a join? Is it like? Uh, it's dot join at the end. It's not. It, it's the opposite. Oh, okay. It's it's not the Python way. Which I have to say, after you get used to joining the other way, <laughs> it is a little nicer. <laughs> Even though the Python thing is, feels kind of intuitive. How do you convert a number to a string? End of um, string. A number to a string. Oh, this works too. Yes, I see what you're doing. Yeah, this is this is smart. We should do this. <laughs> what you're doing is good. 
This is um, similar to the JSON encoding. Yes. Um, the JSON encoding might be a little prettier, but yeah. Um, n dot two string. Yeah, I don't know. Um, when I when I open a, a node or a. Uh, yeah. Sorry, what's the question? If you have a number, how do you make yeah, it a string? Number, yeah, two strings string. sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can also um, add it to an empty string. That's the traditional <laughs> approach. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I had a great time looking at uh, some YouTube where they showed me how to write any JavaScript program that I wanted with only six characters. Oh, yeah. You're right. Right. That, exactly. That kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, called that two string on it. Perfect. And then you're, okay, you've made up an encoding. It's a beautiful encoding. It happens to be JSON, except JSON would have spaces. Yes. Um, what is it with JSON? I think it's JSON has spaces. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it has spaces. No. OK, thanks. <laughs> um, great. All right, so so this is this is indeed, and you're just going to, this is a literal. You don't even have to decode this. This is raw code, right? Yeah. OK, perfect. Yeah. Um, so code as string. I think we still want code as, uh, oh, I see. OK, I'm with you. Yeah. Oops. This is as. And then we don't need this? Um. I'll just put it up here. And what did encode do? <laughs> OK, so we have. Oh, encode was encoding this function. Yeah, that sounds important. Yeah, but we, we're now calling it outside. OK, OK, that makes sense. Instead so we take the string, we, we turn it encode, turns it into a series of numbers. You format those numbers into something we can inject into here, and you do that. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you just much. This is, this is better. Yep. didn't like the same variable name. Oh, OK. Yeah. Great. OK, okay. this could work. <laughs> uh, so now we've got a JSON thingy. Where we don't need to recompile that. All right, now we've got a, ooh. Now this is our, so this is a lot less compact than before. Yeah, whatever. Bundle size, bundle size. Um, <laughs> yeah, OK, uh, great. Looks good. I bet it, it works. Looks, we looks can try it. Fine. Um, in the meantime, I remembered that there was this proposal to Wasm to allow you to return multiple values. Ooh. And that would kind of solve our, yeah. our, our interop problem. Right. Um, I don't know how it works, but we should, we should uh, try it. So it's um, a proposed extension. I think it's in. Oh, that's 2019. I've, yeah, I bet it's, I bet it's in. Uh, yeah. Well, I, if it works at all, it would probably work with the Rust thing, which is like a tuple. Oh, if you return it to yeah, that seems like a reasonable way to interpret a tuple. Yeah. As. Great. This is wonderful. I've never actually gotten this far into actually doing stuff. This is terrific. With Rust. I mean, sorry, uh, with, with, with WebAssembly. Yeah, sure. Who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stop returning a ball and start returning a, a, this guy. What else is on the ball? Oh, that's it. <laughs> Great. Five. OK. Cool. There's a lot of underlined stuff, but this thing. I, why doesn't it like this? I mean, why, why does it not mind that we are returning the ball here? Hmm. I bet it's because this doesn't work. It can't figure out anything else, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Because this is, this is uh, called a macro. or proc macro or something. Uh -huh. So it, it like generates code around the function. OK. And what's what's its error? Is it going to be useful at all? Um, yeah, it doesn't oh. like that we're doing this return thing. So oh, okay. we need so to maybe look we up. Maybe we can't um, do that. What's this thing called? Wasm pack? Wasm pack return multiple values. Rust. Ooh, by Nick. Nice guy at Fastly. What is multi? Yeah, I know you can write the WAT. So you can you can always write the WAS WebAssembly code manually. But um, I want to see if this works. Or yeah, at least see. Compiles. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to compile, right? Because we'll we'll have the. Oh wait, this is, this is the old thing. We, so this is before we change the syntax. It's just changing our build script. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, imports argument must be present and must be an object. Okay, let's uh, let's console.log what um, what code is and see if we screwed up our our. Uh, okay. What file is that? Um, probably, which one runs first? Probably oh. golf. Wait, what is this doing here? 
That's a good question. <laughs> uh, did you build it? To, you put it in a different temp? No? Oh, you put it in a different temp. This is the temp in... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh. Which one is this? Okay, this is inside of... This is in Hello Awesome. Hello Awesome, okay. And is that the one that's being used? Mm. There's another one where... Oh, this is untracked, so this should not exist. Okay, but then in our co JavaScript code, let's make sure we're importing the right one. So if you refresh here, is it going to say, I can't even find that module? It's saying this. It's still saying that. Okay, great. So let's let's add some. Uh, I think we should add some logging to. Uh, what is it? I need some logging in golf dot. Or no, no, just in our temp. Did you already do that? So mm, not nope. that one. I bet we're loading the wrong temp.mjs. Temp.mjs. Uh, that is what code is. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. What? Are, where are we adding logging? Um, probably here. We can actually, you know, we could even write the word debugger in there, and use the browser debugger. As long as we're, like I, for, it's hard for me to find the code in here. We can do it. It's it's in here in the sources section, but I always find it hard to find in there. So I would in this generated code in mm -hmm. hello awesome dot you know, temp dot mjs add the word debugger, and then that will now pause. So down here. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, or sorry, right where I was. I should just written it. Yeah. You can do that. Okay. And you save, and then in here with this open, we should. Uh, okay, I think we're still loading the wrong one. Right? Okay. The other one doesn't exist. Which file is it that that's doing this? This is the. Uh, oh, I don't know. Hmm. Hello, awesome temp.mjs. Oh, you're right. That's the right one. Um, but. I think it's actually a problem with the hello one. Huh. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. We can restart the dev server. You already did that once. Yeah, I did. Um, but now that we've. Oh, is it still running? Yeah. Okay. Type error. Imports argument must be present and must be an object. That sounds like a bug in the WebAssembly itself to me. Oh, yeah? Imports, wait, can we let's look at it again? Imports. Oh, there's also an import object. Yeah, I'm guessing it's. Yeah, well, I'm, we're not even freezing for the debugger thing. That's that's pretty funny. So I have, yeah, I still suspect wrong file. Now in here, hmm. you can click on this file here, and we can see if it matches. Nope, that's nothing. I guess let's add console logs, but I'm I'm st I'm still thinking that this code's not actually running. Um, so we could look at you know, console log of code. Okay, it's, it's spitting it out there. That's good. <laughs> Oh, import. Okay, okay. Um, it's expecting some imports. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is an imports thing. So when in here instantiate, there's another argument called imports. Yep. And so imports object. Oh, or import okay. Object. Yeah. Sorry, that's what you said before. <laughs> I did not understand. Um, okay. We're supposed to get <laughs> that from uh, from the the glue code. Oh. So you could pass in functions that they're supposed to call uh, JavaScript functions. Um, mm -hmm. But so we have we have built some wasm that really expects to be run with that glue code um, because we have that pub struct. 
and we okay. are we really we need to get so this is back to our like our, our hacky build script is not a good plan right now okay. because we should be is providing insta- is there an instance initialize in here or instantiate instantiate streaming import there we go oh. instantiate streaming with imports and we could see what imports is and oh, it's whatever loads called with so we could look at where we call load imports figure out what that is init memory okay so there's some <laughs> this is stuff that it might need it looks like wbg w bind gen throw so it needs to throw sometimes it's strange um it's using errors for flow control i don't know um that's weird but it needs the the way that it you're on board. The way that this works is it specs some of this stuff. So okay. I think we also, uh, for context, this function is the one that we cannot write in context. Oh, okay, right, right. So, yes. So we can't just copy this in. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so I, I want to take a step back at this point okay. and say, all right, uh, what could we... So the, the last path I want to explore mm-hmm. is could we do the multi-value export stuff? Um, mm-hmm. And then a thing I want to research on like later is can Wasm bind gen generate different types of this code? And could it make a version that doesn't try to do the fetch? Um, mm-hmm. okay. And then we could just like replace parts of it. But right now we can't use this code at all because it's trying to do a fetch. But okay. I wonder if but there's... Could we... I mean, this is, this is how it gets the imports, right? Could we try to just copy this and then comment this part out yeah i think so yeah yeah or we could just i mean to get past this error we could just pass an empty object okay the, the only thing yeah just expects yeah totally and then we'll get runtime errors when it tries to call them but great so there's some kind of there's a main function in there that calls right a, right away as soon as you instantiate it mm-hmm. that must do something like i don't know i guess they need a little what do you call it what's the thing that allocates an allocator <laughs> they might have one of those in there or something uh, that they have to boot up or something. Okay. There's some stuff. Uh, and we can put some stuff in there to cheat, but it's probably not going to work. Okay. Okay, but the last piece I wanted I wanted to yeah. t- see if we can uh, do the multiple value return thing okay. from Rust. And I'm based on wasn't that thing not liking it. I'm guessing no, but I'm going to spend 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look at our... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google for that a little bit. What is the code as a string? It's like all of our Rust code so far. Um, so Rust wasm bind gen uh, multiple turn values. Returning strings is a little tricky. Only supports one return value. Is being standardized. Okay. All right. It says closed. I think it's in. Oh, it's in. It, the proposal was moved. Um, it's in the spec. Now it's still just the proposal. Um, I think it's it's probably in. So in the in the binary, there is space left for. Um, you have to specify how many return values you have. Oh, okay. So so I'm thinking about this, and it's in there. Um, but I don't know how to tell Rust to just stick a couple more things on the stack or something where we'd expect them. So um, I'm, I think I'm, I'm feeling sufficiently flummoxed to, yeah. to so, so, so the what, way what forward. Have we done? Yeah, what have we done? Um, <laughs> we have, we have ball shoot our little, our little game, and we were trying to write some of this code. We did. I mean, we got the ad working, which was pretty cool, right? right. We this had is, this is on prod. This is in Vercel. And it's using the ad. Right. It's using Rust. I mean, ad. we accomplished the goal, right? <laughs> we are indeed using these. We're using a Wasm plus uh-huh. instead of, and we could go through and do some more of that, right? It's like, yeah, sure, all, all these things that, that take any number of arguments and return one number. Mm-hmm. We could even try to be silly and, um, and take, you know, take our five numbers mm-hmm. and encode them in 64 bytes. Okay. Sorry, bits, uh, right? 
um, and they'd all be reduced precision, but each one can have about oh, yeah. eight bits. <laughs> um, and since they're just floats, I mean, okay, good, that, that's pretty silly. Because um, we really do, that function is returning. It's not just two. I, when it was two, I was thinking, sure, just turn them into 32 bit. Yeah. Um, but but it's we do need like five X, Y, D, yeah. And the, the time, I think, doesn't change. Right, so, so I think okay. it could just be X, Y, D, X, D, Y. Um, so if we were out for some bit, you know, I don't know what a 16-bit floating point number looks like, but it's, it's a pretty really very precise. It's a pretty silly hack because uh, really, what we should yeah yeah what we should do is just get to the point where we can return those multiples. We could fix these trig functions. You want to fix a trig function? Sure. What should what should also, this be doing? I was thinking we could also look closer at the convex functions and see if we can do anything with those. Oh sure yeah yeah like, totally like maybe add an index or something. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, let's do let's do some of since since we did start during work hours. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's talk a little, little convex. That sounds great. Okay, so we got our convex function. Ooh. Do we need to do anything to get back to a point where we're working? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Because um, we'll go to Rust and just hit undo a bunch, or delete that function, or make it not pub. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. Let's get rid of this. Uh, cool. See if that fixes it. Different one. That one. This one. Great. Okay. Recompile the Rust. Cool. Recompile it to JavaScript. Oh wait, it's not. It's already running. Oh, it's not. Okay. Okay. We'll see if this is happy. Oh, that one. one. Right. Windows. Windows not defined. Okay. Because. Because. Um, because this. what's it called? Server renders. Server-side renders yeah. where Windows not defined. So I need to when I'm doing this debugging, I need to start calling it global this, which is a global variable that exists in both places. Oh, uh, okay. Um, like okay. global, yeah. Okay, great, great. So we're back to this. Yeah, let's actually let's. Let's. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Let's, let's do some. Let's let's see if we can get something. That's not just. So the ad is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Let's leave it for now. That yeah. sounds good. We got we got some addition that's yeah. happening in Rust. Right. Uh, what else do we have? We've got get ball. Mm -hmm. uh, it, oh, okay. So you've got all of your mutations and queries in the same file. Yeah, That's I kind of like one. I mean, yeah. I like less file. I mean, I, I go by the old right. You put it in one file until it gets annoying to scroll up and down, and then you move it out. So mm -hmm. I, but but right, it's different than the normal syntax we suggest, which is yes. have a default export. In fact, I didn't even know that this would work. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> which we you know that's totally thing refactor we could do moving into several. Yeah, but it's called golf, which is pretty general. Um, Okay. Um, Doing some input validation here. All right. Just to really, stroke. really be. It checks all of the balls. Mm hmm And it gets the one that has the correct identifier. Does yeah. It do anything else with it? So balls? we could do a, uh, we could, if we had an index on ID or something, we could efficiently pull out the right one. Yeah. We um, should do that. But it's, but it's not, oh, oh, right, right. But this is a, so I call it identifier uh -huh. um, because the convex IDs are not uh, cryptographic, like you, just if knowing a convex ID gives you access to something, that's probably not secure enough because there's some entropy in there, but not like not not, not enough. You could potentially predict one of those. So I wanted mm -hmm. a I'm calling identifier, but it should be secret or something. Like okay. this is this this identifier yeah, is a that's secret. Very reasonable. Which and then convex IDs are changing so that they will have some some yeah. randomness in them. And we'll need to get a cryptographer on it to say like whether yeah. you can use those for like yeah. whether there's sufficient randomness in there. Um, but I'll, I'd be inclined to say like, oh, if I, you really want like a password or like, oh yeah, or then something, you would not then store it in an ID. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what could we? So what this is currently doing is it's it's fetching all of them, mm -hmm. and then it's filtering. This is a JavaScript filter, so we could. One of the quick changes is we could filter in the query. That sounds great. Do we need to make a? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, right. That is a good change. Uh, Are we not allowed to do that because we don't have an index on it? No, we're allowed. Great. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, Great. So hopefully okay. this is. And we expect that it always exists. Yeah, because this would throw an error. There were. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're staring at doesn't. So unique. Unique doesn't mean there's only one. Is it? You went first. 
Uh, unique does name it. So oh, okay. Oh, I figured unique would be like is unique on some specific Return character. singular results. Okay, cool. And throws. Uh, that's throws very an nice. Error. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's that's a change. Great. That's a good change. That's like write a commit message about the the proud change that we just made. <laughs> uh, push it. What is this? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. But we could do that. Want some type checking? All right. Cool. Good. Hopefully, maybe a little bit faster, because mm -hmm. it's it's no longer. Well, it's still walking everything in the database. Right. But now it's not it's, in JavaScript. Now it's walking it in Rust instead of yeah. in JavaScript. Okay. Uh, so we can make it even faster by not walking everything. Cool. Let's do that. Maybe. So let's. Yeah. Let's if you have a thing called identifier, then maybe you want to uh, uh, index on it. What do you want to call it? Um, by identifier. I mean, we could we could change the um, name of identifier at some point, but I think that's fine. Okay, so now it's easy to search. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And <laughs> uh, the Alex has worked really hard for these. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> these are real good. They're and they're real nice. Okay, and then we got a range, and it's almost the same except you get rid of this thing. Right, implicit. Okay, cool. And this, so this is the published stroke. What else is there? There's create ball, get ball. So create ball gets called right when you land on the page. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. What does get ball do? Uh, gets it by ID. So this one is super fast already. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, and that's because anyone's allowed to get something by ID. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need okay. you know, a so secret this is, to be allowed to do that. You can get the other ones as well. Right, right. All, almost all of them, you just can't get the, ID, the identifier field of them because that would give you permission to modify Ooh, them. That's clever. But it means well, that the type also, is different. Yeah. It's also error prone, where <laughs> yeah. if someone accesses, oh, sure, I'll give you access to this data. Access, grants access. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this, right, This and this is where you're doing that. You're stripping yes. the identifier out. Right, right. So it's important that it actually happens. Yeah. Waiting for all table indexes to be backfilled. Great. This might have a few. Um, there's not a there's, ton of. Uh, there's also a slight possibility that this is stuck due to something I did today. Oh, nice. <laughs> so oh, we'll see. We'll, um, we'll wait for a bit, maybe. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, do you want to do your TS config thing? Yeah, let's do my TS config thing. That sounds great. Um, that was alright. Can we make a shared terminal? We're gonna do that with. I think it's live share here. Oh, no, 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 oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, in this stuff. And then if you say share terminal um, and give me read write on it, so I can type, I can just tell you it's type, but I can just type it. Um, we're, let's, oh, is this, this is not where we want to be. Let's, where should we be? Where is, uh, is it here maybe? Nope. Um, do you know where? Dot, dot. And then here, we're going to do npx convex. Um, oh, changing the font. Mine doesn't need to do anything up there. Um, npx convex type check. And it's going to say, oh, we can't find a TS config that would specify the environment in which all that stuff's supposed to run. Mm -hmm. So we could say code gen TS config. And now we should have one. And we should get some type errors. Uh, oh, except I fixed them right before the first thing I did. <laughs> uh, getting ready for this was fix them all so well I'm pretty good at fine. creating type errors great great good <laughs> um, I actually I, I don't know where, where should we add something and hopefully it shows up right in both um, but it is possible there are some things that would not be an editor type error because the editor well no they, they will be they, they, they should be um, how about you access window somewhere because like like I love debugging with window um, <laughs> That was good too. It's <laughs> turning these numbers into strings, pretty classic. Um, 
window dot yeah you can just just window or window dot uh, it now TypeScript will not be happy with this oh okay but but you if you were to say window uh, window dot uh, location that's a thing in browsers oh. uh, it's supposed to be where you are and we're not going to set it we're just going to access it we could log it or something if we want yeah totally reasonable thing to do mm -hmm. not a reasonable thing to do in convex Con in convex you would you know need to oh this is great when we're on message <laughs> none of this none of this uh build build systems in rust that don't work because of my hacks um so now we should it's interesting the, wait does the editor editor doesn't mind um so that is because what file is this lib no next config what file is this golf golf okay so golf is a convex function so i would expect this not to work so so I'm now going to run our type check, and great, we get an error there. Um, but the issue, hmm, but I'm not sure why VS Code doesn't give us an error. Maybe because that it's slow to pick up that there's a new TS config or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to close it because then you get lost. Oh right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we have this error that says like the totally reasonable thing to do in the browser. This is not the browser. Mm -hmm. um, or even this code doesn't only run in the browser, so if you import it from, from somewhere else. But it's not just the location, it's also, it just doesn't like window. Right, right, window is not, I, yeah, I said location so that we were doing something sort of like mm -hmm. that you might recently want to do, because that would be like the URL. Okay, great, we've got our type checking, works great, I'm gonna delete that buggy code. Um, also, we seem to be uh, okay. continuing the... All right. So what's going to happen in the meantime? Can we? Uh, this is this, this this boring. Is, this internals, is actually, no, this but, is actually stuck. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, like um, stuck as in we're I'm, we're not going to be able to run functions there in the meantime. No. Okay. Well, we're okay. not going to be able to run con uh, push, at least. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. We but might but our convex functions run, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Ooh. Fun. Okay. Yeah. Continuing the the pattern of breaking convex. Right. Like this good. Way. Good. Yeah. Ooh. That's why we're doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hit the ball that hard. Yeah, so in dev, this will actually pop up. Um, uh, okay. I mean, this is something we could fix, mm -hmm. which is there's client-side code that, like, drawing, that we shouldn't draw the line if you're more than that distance away from it. Mm. So good, simple stuff like that that we could do we could, without we could, pushing. Or we could max out the line. Yeah, we could max out the line. Yeah, small hops are, are, are fine. Just okay. Let's well, actually, yeah. Would you have heard that little? Don't work. Well, it's relative. I mean, they, they work. <laughs> they're just in the other direction. So we could change that trig function sure. to make that. Yeah, let's let, let's do some of this. Let's let's just, yeah, just let's, let's a little you. before your before your train ride home. Let's do a little bit. Okay. I'll, I'll, all right. I'm I'm doing it. Okay. Um. What are we gonna do? Or I could do it. Uh, Trying to find where your trig functions are. Yeah, I guess they're probably gonna be in. I think they're in golf. Um, degree. I wrote a function called degrees to vector. That's mm -hmm. suspicious. I bet this does not work correctly. So, first, I don't know what angle in degrees is. Um, let's see. But but based on this, I think it's going to be. Uh, oh, we're not going to be able to push this. That's fine. We don't have to push anything. Oh, but if oh we no! Want you're to right. You're right. We will need to. Oh, sorry. This is this is that code. Yeah. Can we? I mean, well, I don't care about this instance, so we're welcome to. Well, yeah. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's take it out. Let's make it even worse. <laughs> uh, let's migrate back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the indexing is no longer going to work. All right. Look at that. That's a type error, right? It is a type error. That's beautiful. Yeah. But it was also. Oh yeah, it is a type error, right? Yeah. Yeah. It might be a runtime error too, but. Uh. And it's a type error that blocks the push. Right? Great. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to skip it, you can, and then you'll get a runtime error. Okay, that's a good system. All right. All right. I have no idea what the index is doing. Great. At Great. The moment. Well, we don't need indexes. Um, <laughs> indexes are important, but well, let's let's not use them. Um, okay. That's okay. Plenty. So we have some. So you call this thing with angle and degrees. And mm -hmm. two possibilities: the angle in degrees is correct, and my math in the convex function is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, the other is that angle in degrees just does not work. Oh, look right here. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's bounded. 
it's bounded. <laughs> so I assume, so let's, let's remove that restriction. If you were doing some trig and you had a DX and a DY and mm -hmm. you wanted to turn it into a degree, mm -hmm. um, what would you do? Arctan 2. Arctan 2, and that gives you a full, I'm probably using Arctan. Uh, well, I, I actually. Well, well, well let's, let's find out. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's look. Um, what, what code is, who's calling this? Probably the page or I something. Think the main difference for me between Arctan and Arctan 2 is that Arctan will get mad at you if you divide by zero, but Arctan 2 takes in two arguments. Ah, got it. Oh, that's with the two. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay, let's let's look. Um, what file is this probably? If I want to know where this is used, what do I do? Command Shift F. Um, Publish stroke, publish stroke, mm -hmm. and then I can find it here. There we go. No, this is a generated API. I can find it here. Publish equals that. And then I say publish. Let's look at where I use it. Um, that's a little funny that I do at the end of. <laughs> this code works fine. I would be more comfortable with the code if we wrote it like that. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. so that we could <laughs> use this thing in here. But this is a function. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Um, things get just get hoisted. It's OK. Um, wait, does it, why does that get hoisted? I Isn't don't have a like great understanding. Is JavaScript like in Python where every variable declared is? It used to be. Oh, OK. And we had a thing called var. Oh, and yeah. that's the way that var works. It's function scope. But now we have, um, oh. OK, OK, yeah. No, 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 it is like that, but it's within the scope. So mm -hmm. you can, um, yeah, so that's why it works. These are scope level, but it's not like uh, Lisp or whatever where every let is another scope down below. Right. The, when you do so, yeah, it's what you said. Or rest. Um, the const, okay, rest of that too. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. So this const just means some at the scope of this function, we have that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so a dx, dy, I trust myself to do dx's and dy's. Um, I have to remember what my coordinate system was. I bet that I'm saying x gets bigger as you go to the right and y gets bigger as you go up, which okay. is a like nice for thinking about game logic, not nice for painting to the screen. So we right. have some flips in the rendering code, but I'd rather do it in the rendering code. Makes and, sense. Uh, I've so done the, things like that before. The dx and the dy should be relative to that. I've got some mightiness. And I've got some, yeah, some mightiness. Um, that was suggested by a viewer um, who who then I realized that might is already uh, yeah. down, so you don't really need that. But but it makes it clear, right? Yeah. With 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 just might, it, it sounds like a maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and here, okay. So the first thing is let's switch to Arctan two because that just sounds nice. Is it dx and dy? That's how this works. Uh, it's dy dx. Oh, okay. at least according to Wikipedia. Great, I trust that. Dy dx. I'm going to save that. And th this is not convex code. So let's just look at the um, at this guy and see if it still works. Yeah, great. Okay, still works. So we, cool. Oops. OK, now we have these problems. OK. Um, so I'm guessing that well, let's, let's see what we're spitting out. There's um, also the fact that 0 means straight up. I, I don't think that will be true anymore. Yeah, OK, so let, let's change some of that. Um, what's the, yeah, what are the numbers we're spitting out now? Hmm. So, right, what I wanted was this, yeah. I think, positive, that, you know, silly way to, I, I turned my unit circle. Mm -hmm. um, let's just use the real definition and okay. see what, uh, for debugging, I think it's nice to do something I mean, I think like, that's what it did. What's that? I don't know what you were doing before, but this should be doing the real unit circle. Okay, cool. But I, I just to confirm it, I'm gonna print okay. it out here. And how does that work? Um, every let's see on mouse move. So mouse pause. So on mouse move stuff happens. Um, I'm gonna render um, mouse pause here just to to see it. So now I hope if we move the mouse around, we'll see. Uh, okay, fine. I'll I'll. Do the uh, JSON dot stringify of uh, mouse. Pause.
cause comma null comma two. Right. What is the null and two for? Um, they are for uh, gosh, I can't. I don't see them anywhere. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, I guess I I can't can't go to the left. I'm gonna stick them down here. All right, they're all over the place now. Oh, I don't see them. Probably maybe the Z of the last thing is too big. I'll I'll log them as well. Console dot log um, of console dot log the mouse pause. Ooh, I can see what you're doing because of the different errors that are popping. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, we don't need these. Okay, definitely seeing some positions. Okay, now let's add the. Uh, Angle in degree. I guess I'm just copying and pasting this now. Uh, where is our console log? So at the end, I'm going to also print out our function. Um, ah, shoot. Uh, I want all of this stuff. So right now, can you um, to tab to the code here? So I'm I'm annoyed that I've got all this intermediate stuff in here mm. that I'd like to be printing on every render. Um, or, but, uh, or every time mouse you can't changes. Print it from in there? Yeah, well, well, in here, this is a function that only runs when. Um, oh, when you click. Like when I click. Yeah. Uh, um, but I can, because it's also a function that is redefined on every, like, every time we render this, we get a new version of the function. Mm -hmm. So I can just pull all these out. And the semantics are the same. Oh. Yes. Um, Although it's sad because it says, but sometimes there isn't a ball. And so I have to say all this stuff with an if, and that's no good. So so it's kind of annoying. Um, so log whatever I want. Angle in degrees is the thing I was interested in. We need the, I actually will put it back here. Hmm. And then I'll just do an if. Uh, what, what was it? If uh, well, it's just making yeah. Cool. Okay, now could we, if we move the mouse around, I'm hoping we will just see some angle in degrees, and we can see if it's how your thing works and what kind of problems we have. Dy. What was it? Dy not defined? Hmm. Oh, this is from a different console log. This one down here. Remove that one now. Great. OK. What do you think of this unit circle? OK. So we've got positive numbers up to 90. 90 straight up. So okay. it's 0. This looks zero like the one I learned about in math class. Great. OK. 0 to 90. And then they keep going. Right. Can and you get then... it up in the air by? Uh, Moving it, yeah, doing that. Ah. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Um. <laughs> okay, let's get right. another ball. <laughs> How do I? Um. Oh, it works in this direction. Okay, and then I go like that. Great. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> well done. Um. All right. Okay, so it's zero over here, and then it goes around to one eighty over here, and then Great. it becomes negative one eighty and it goes back around to negative zero. Cool, so let's update our golf function can, um, to expect stuff like that. So this is no longer the case. We now expect, what's what's our validation? I mean, any number will probably work because it'll probably just mod it 360, negative, but, but if it is less than zero, or oh, was it negative? Yeah. Okay, okay, great, negative 180. Um, to the positive 180. Or if it so if it is less than that, or it is greater than 180, then hey, um, ten degrees, negative 180 to 180, um, unit circle style. Okay. Cool. I think it would be unlikely for someone to plug in like radians or something. There. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but even if they did. That would certainly between be between right, negative right. 180 and 180, and mostly this this right. I'm trying to think about validation on the server so that someone doesn't inject you know 
Oh, like like right. this, this is my endpoint validation, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm trying to be helpful, but but really it's okay. Uh, we also have the mightiness being too much in here, which we could get rid of. We could fix. Um, what else we need to do? Let's rewire. Was it this? The. Uh, sorry, I'm look up here. Um, oh, and the the. Oh no, it's. <laughs> I thought your cursor was my cursor, and it was nausea for a second. <laughs> I was moving. Um, Okay, so now we got to change this degrees to vector thing. Um, here it is. <laughs> Help me out. Nice. Uh, I thought I'd do sine and cosine. Uh, should I be doing? Okay, and my goal is that up. I want up to be. I'm returning an x y right. So. Huh. Uh, so I'll just swap them. <laughs> that seem right. Oh. Okay, can we see if that works? <laughs> um, I guess we've got a. Oh, we got a push. Oh, yeah. Nothing's local, man. We don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't trust the the local client to wait. That's not true. Some of it was being rendered locally. Yeah. Only the line. Only the line. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, looks good. Go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Final. Yeah. Okay, and it works well. Okay, well, let's fix this part now. Okay. So I don't want, I still don't want to let you throw the ball that hard. Okay. So let's have a client side validation that it doesn't even send the request if you do. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to stop the line at a length of. Ooh. Whoa, you can throw it down really hard. And nice. It up. Oh, that's fun. We've just made this better. Well, maybe we should, we should commit that. That's, that's, a, this is gold. What do you think of this bounce behavior? Maybe that's what we should change. What's wrong with it? Ooh. Okay. Well, okay. Well, we're gonna hit keep hitting that. So let's fix this. Um, we can pop back to code here. Uh, I think it's in. Um, it might be nice to max out the, because if it's like sort of off screen, mm -hmm. I would still like to hit it back towards where I am. Maybe. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what what's the right visual representation of like mm -hmm. you're you're at max? I just I don't want. Um, you don't have to like reach across the screen to get the longest line possible. We can change the color of the line. Um, so where do I draw a line? Hmm. Uh, line. Ooh, look at this. There's a line in here. Ooh, we're over here. Um, and it's black, and it goes from here to here. Is this something you made? Uh, yeah. This cool. is my line. Oh, um, no, no. This is an SVG thing. So uh -huh. I am inside of an SVG context, okay. and these are these are our types for that. And th did you follow when I did that? No, no, bummer, bummer. OK. Can I do that? Yep. Cool. Hmm. Or oh, I guess if you if you um, command shift F, though, then, then it'll follow, I bet. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Well, that was the wrong thing, but um, line. Anyway, so, so I can make a line. And it can, right now, it's just going from to, to the mouse position. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to go only some of the way to the mouse position, it mm -hmm. feels like I'd need trig again. And I don't want to pull that out. Okay. Um, how about uh, dist equals um, math dot? Oh, we should just write a little distance function, right? Sure. Of um, how would you do this? X one, y one, x x two, y two, math dot square root. Uh, oh, it wants to know that they're numbers. I promise it would have worked. Um, the ma why doesn't it like this? The math dot square root of uh, x two minus x one squared. Mm -hmm. I guess the order didn't actually matter. Um, plus y two minus y one. Squared. This is something we should write in Rust. And it returns a single number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, and um, I want. Ah, uh, shoot. So I have to. I'm just going to. How about we change the color? That's perfect. Dist equal. Uh, uh, color equals. Uh, if the dist of x, oh shoot. Let me get 
my Vim bindings in here. Oops. Oh, sorry. I just undid. We have a shared undo buffer. This is terrible. <laughs> uh, okay, where's my multiple cursors? What was it? Perfect. Thank you. That, okay, great. And now our stroke here is going to be that. Um, it's going to be color. And and really, I guess we should say like const too far equals this. Mm. And now we can because the, because the other thing we could do now is. Um, Okay, these are the controls. Wow, this is just a display. There's no clicking here. That's kind of funny. Let's see, can you make it wider so we can see? Oh, what, what? Ah, uh, you can still hit the ball, though. Right, right, you can. That's true. Okay, and it's red. Oh, okay, so, so this number has nothing to do with that number. Um, how do we make those have something to do with each other? I guess we have to look at the code for mightiness. Mightiness. Why don't the numbers have anything to do with each other? Because mm, we just chose 20, and I wasn't actually using pixels when I calculate uh, mightiness. Okay. Up here, we have this mightiness equals that divided by 20. And we should pull that state out, but let's not. Um, let's just divide by 20. OK. Uh, dist over 20. Great. Okay, does that fix it? Do we have, are we good UI designers now? So as soon as I turn the red, then that means it'll be an error. Right. right. Okay. And, but the next thing we should do is. Um, I can't really see the difference because I'm color blind. Oh, sorry. That's, that's, this is awful then. Um, <laughs> stroke uh, width equals uh, what? too far. I don't know what that is, but I'm just going to make the, the thing wider and. Yeah. Or, or stroke dash offset line cap. I don't know my, C, my, my SVG, but, but one of these good things, stroke width, if we're too far, then it's one, then it's, then it's one, otherwise it's 10. What's that look like? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Great. Okay, now let's also client side not actually send it if it's the wrong size. Um, Mightiness. So this one's OK. But this one's not OK. Nice. And now I'm writing, if mightiness is greater than 20, um, play a sound effect or something. Uh, what do you mean design? Well, it's the browser, man. Well, I guess most <laughs> web apps don't use don't use audio, do they? But yeah, we could, we could do, uh, I mean, this gets a little. No, I guess it takes. We have to figure out how you can embed a. If we have an audio file, you can just stick it in the browser, and there's a bunch of APIs to play it. Um, mm -hmm. But, but it's not a simple thing. Okay, I mean, it could be. I we think could this do works. It. Yeah, this works. Great. Ooh. Should do nothing when you click out there. Great. Oh wow. Okay, fixed it. I added a check. Let's get rid of that console.log, whatever that is. Angle indigities. Cool. Now we're now we're cooking. OK, so the problem is when there's an outstanding mutation to the server, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it says, hey, are you sure you want to reload? But it's reloading because the dev server said so. Oh. So it's an interesting dynamic. Um, maybe we should turn that off in dev. I'm not sure. But you do want to know that your users are experiencing it. OK, this is, this is, a, this is pretty funny. <laughs> Wee. I wonder if we could get. I want to try to clear the, see if our frame rate gets better, because um, they feel they feel kind of jumpy. Um, dashboard. Mm, golf. Data, clear table. All right. My golf ball disappeared. Is this should make your browser wider. Wow, it's supposed to be yeah. wider so I can see it. 
Yeah, we could, we could make it responsive because we could have it shrink or something. Oh. Ah, there. Okay. Also, that's kind of annoying, right? That that how they go out of. Gosh, there's so many things we could fix here. When someone's paying attention, um, that that's way too wide, right? Stroke. What should it be? Uh, three. How about? Oh, nice. Oh, okay, got stuck up there, and now it's back. And we've we've made our thing such that. Um, I think that's harder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we've. Uh, well, we could be done here. Right, any other pieces? We should. I mean, this is this is getting fun. This is like there are lots of things we could fix. But the thing that's bugging me is that I can only see half the golf ball down here. But also that when you click to the side, it just it it uh just it comes resets. back. And we should we can loop, right? Should we loop? Yeah, let's let's that's, loop around. That's the, pretty doable. Side. That's that should be reasonable. All right. Um, what's which file is that? I think that's in simulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I don't know what's doing that. What do we want? Uh, let's pop over ah, here yes. and uh, there's got to be an if somewhere. So this is the stuff we translated to Rust. Thank you. I feel more comfortable writing Rust quickly from scratch now. Cool. Uh, we cool. check sometimes. We just return ball, and ball is what the original state of the ball. Oh, we, this changed. What do we do? Well, it modifies the x. Oh, okay. Okay, right. We change the if we set the x back to. Uh, so that it's on screen. Okay. I guess. If the x is if it's off to the left or it's off to the right. So let's just change it to, if x is less than x min, then um, ball dot x or then just x right equals. Um, equals x max minus x. Sound reasonable? Uh, is x zero on the left? Um, yes, x is zero is on the left. Yep. Um, and if it's bigger than the max, then x, as long as we don't loop over by more than one at a, like, if it goes very at high speeds, this will not work, but, but this should be okay. It's going to be plus x. Uh, yes, because it's negative. Thank you. Um, and then, then let's do x min plus uh, what x minus x mm, yeah. max minus x min or something. So we can just well, okay, x min is zero. So well, right, but but yeah. but if I bother to make variables for them, I want. But right. you're right, you're right. There's probably lots of things that will break it's, if I make that not the case. Me. Yeah. Um, is is this correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Right. Offset it. Okay. Great. Did we make a more fun game? <laughs> uh, push. Oh, thank you. Right. We should set up something that just automatically pushes, shouldn't we? Yeah. That'd be smart. It's almost as if that wasn't demo tip. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can shoot off the screen and then come back. Nope. It's still doing what it was doing before. Hmm. Okay. Let's read the code more carefully. Uh, oh, I don't. I think that was the wrong condition. So, so this. Oh, I didn't. I didn't delete this part. <laughs> <It's later. laughs> oh. I just added the condition. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I, sh I should be pushing too. Um, I'm right there, so I can run npx convex push when I need to. Still not working. Hmm. Okay, the, this stuff is doing that. Is there anything we have bounced down there? We have. I just pushed again, but that shouldn't matter. Um, okay. Yeah, it says it skipped because it was doing the same thing. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. Do the classic commit a um, you know a commit a crash, throw new error, hmm? just 
the old, are we actually running this code? Hmm. You just pushed. Yeah, just pushed. What? Oh, I did it at the top level. <laughs> I'm supposed to do it. Okay. Well, it tells us at least we're pushing the functions. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, what is the logic here? We do all this stuff, and then we move it. If it's outside, if the ball is if x is less than x min, then change it. If it's bigger than that, this is the bounce. This is doing that. Yeah. Maybe in the loop here, do we do a check? Oh, look at that. There's uh -oh. a there's a there's a another check. Okay. Um, out of bounds, return to start. So we just get rid of that. Yeah. Great. Um, was that? Wait. Um, yeah, it's in the x direction only. But this is the loop. Yeah, it looks like I was doing it in both places. Okay, but don't we we also want to do it in the loop? Hmm. Right. So I, I previously I oh oh um. Or we could even do it in step. Yeah, well, I think we're we're doing it in step. Oh, we are. But the problem okay. is I I done oh, a bad job okay. of the logic and put it in two places. Okay. Um. Cool. Ah. Great. Nice. Ooh. All right. Terrific. Um, I'm tempted to like get to make it more of a golf game, like. Well, first of all, it doesn't look great when um, when it's moving quickly and this line doesn't update. Yeah, why, why is that? <sighs> I don't know. You want to try to find it? Yeah, yeah. OK, so what okay. what's what's so going on here? The it's, it's the mouse. Oh, you know what it is? The, it only updates when the mouse position updates. Oh. This is a React data flow kind of thing. Uh, okay. So this line, it's always the right thing, but it only re-renders on mouse position change. Not on the ball position change. Right. And that's because if we look at ball position, ball position, uh, I'm not totally convinced that's the case. Um, could we watch it, um, play with it a little more? Does that make sense? Like if we don't move the mouse, what happens? OK, yeah, it keeps not updating. OK, OK, so that is the behavior we're seeing. Yeah. Um, Where's our update? Uh, so this is back in game, was it? Yeah. Mm. So there's probably a set state at the top level. So this, um, yeah, there's a use state for the mouse position, but there's no use state for the got it ball position. OK. Well. So I'm tempted to do a React hack where we, we write a function called, um, here we do this. We have a const uh, re-render, please. Oh, is it because this is state. not a hook? This is not directly a hook. Correct, right, right. OK. Uh, use query equals, so anytime that we want to, well, I mean, it's hard because, OK, yeah, yeah, equals. Current position. This is an expensive function. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, every time we re-render, we find out what the current position is. What we? How are we updating the current position? Yeah, I think we need to write a hook for this. So I was I was just gonna like ha pass this function somewhere and then call it every time. Yeah. What? Okay. How does this code work? Um, We don't keep getting updates. Yeah, it's not. It's. Can we look at the WebSocket and the, the, the so, so I want to confirm the question of when do we get new updates from Convex? Mm -hmm. And I bet it is rarely. Right. It's definitely not on every frame. Where is the WebSocket? I usually get it by uh, typing sync up here. To, to yeah to to filter to this is the WebSocket and then messages. Um, and now if we start clicking stuff, we'll start seeing more messages. We can only see one at a time now because of, um, yeah. Oh, cool. Great. Yeah, so they happen whenever you click because we have to send the mutation up and then the query back to find out mm -hmm. about those, that new stroke. But uh, OK, so it's, it's not that that's driving it. How is, um, How is the ball 
getting yeah. re-rendered. So I bet it's outside of React because I have this superstition about React that um, if you're doing every animation stuff, you don't want to be touching React, and that's not fair. If you're doing every every frame stuff with a lot of entities on screen, that's maybe fair. But I think probably what I did is I stepped outside of React for this part. So now I'm looking for, but we're going to change that. We are going to now have a, um, where was the use state? Right here, let's have a new pattern where we have a const fall. What's a ball pause? I forget. Oh, it's either a ball based on the ball, it's current position of the ball or undefined. Okay. And what is the current position of a ball? Just an X and a Y. Um, so this is a use state of a X, which is a number, a Y, which is a number. Mm -hmm. And so it's undefined. Great. And that's what we're going to do for this instead. And it is our job on every frame. So we need like a set animation frame loop where we keep calling current position of ball. Mm -hmm. Call set ball, ball pause. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, do stuff from here. What's the problem? I don't know. What, how does request animation frame work? Oh no, it's it's it. You do it with a function. That's how you do it. Function um, update, and then you say request animation frame. On every animation frame, please call this function, and then return a function that does the cleanup. And the cleanup in this case is calling cancel animation frame on the same function. Ah, uh, okay. And that's why you can't pass it in this case. You have to pass in the same function. Function. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, nope, but I'm wrong. <laughs> TypeScript's telling me uh, that this actually takes a number. So the first code was right. Uh, uh, handle equals this. It was a good guess, but it was wrong. And what we do, right, every time, every single time here, we call what you, what you just said. So ball, set ball pause, mm -hmm. current position. Um, this is going to die. Oh, yeah, there you go. We also, I'm sure you should go home at some point, too. But, oh, oh. Uh, okay, you can reach it. Great. <laughs> Caught it at four percent. Nice. Uh, current current position position of the ball. Great. And then we're not doing this anymore. And there could be some other issues here. Um, but argument of ball or none. How did this you work? Do the oh yeah yeah. Uh, if there's a ball, then do this. Otherwise, it's still undefined. That is the thing. I'm not. This might work now, um, but I think we're we're double calling it because there must have been somewhere else that was. Yeah, we'll see. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's following but, it even if I don't yeah. move the mouse. Okay. A little laggy, no? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely some some lag we're dealing with. Yeah. I think there's somewhere else where I'm also updating stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right here. Uh, <laughs> okay, what's going on here? Um, so in here, instead of uh, so with the place where I render the balls, it also do this on every ball. 
for every single ball, it uh, updates all you know does does all this stuff too, and we no longer need to do that with our ball. Um, so instead of it's going to be balls dot filter is balls. That's the thing in, in in our code we don't even know which one is our ball really. Yeah, um, so we could I identify. There it. was no identifier there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is it really a problem? Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. it's still all right. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is great. Yeah. And I don't think it would be improved much by excluding one of the render frames. I agree. Yes, yes. Good, good call. Okay, so this is already an improvement. This is this is a, another commit it and we're done. Ooh. Uh, I don't know anything. Oh, you can bounce now. Okay, let me let me get in there and play with you. Uh, <laughs> What? Oh, this is localhost. I can't. Um, oh, well. I can. I can, can play with me like this. Oh, great. Um, oh, we've got to commit and push. Why is there so many? I thought you cleared the data. I think I did. Every time we reload, more comes in. Oh. Probably have thousands of of uh, annoying fans also paying attention. Why is it up there? Um, maybe you pull down the window. I don't know. I don't know why it's down there. Let's let's uh, push to GitHub so that we can have our code here. Oh right. Or sorry, I, I keep telling you to do it, but I can just do stuff. Git log, cool. Sounds great. Git status. I bet we only need the the ones we changed, right? We don't need any of the new files. We can git add convex ts config. Mm -hmm. um, git add next config. That's yeah, what that let us important. use the top level weights. Commit. Ship it. Oh, I, did, I did, thought I added you as a. I never got to it. I got so close. I got into the settings before, but I never actually did it. I even I even got to this step. I remember <laughs> I remember doing this. Two um, fifty. This is where we're supposed to be stalling for for content and saying things. But um, but th this was fun. It was fun to um, yeah. go to the deep end we, a bit and try yeah. to do some of the rust <laughs> we, stuff. We definitely dove really far into the web yeah. assembly. Yeah. And then it was nice to resurface and be able to make some changes. Yeah. To your app. Add people. Oh, damn it. Great. Okay, Sweet. and now I have permission back on your computer via my VS Code or our, your shared VS Code to do a push. Um, do I have to accept it? Oh, you probably have to accept it, yeah. They might, the, the place I've looked for it before is on the repo. Oh. I think it's an anti-spam thing. They don't tell you too much about it. Great. Push. Cool. Um, okay. I don't know how long it takes to, for this to build. I guess I can find out by looking at my... So the thing that we're using to deploy it is called Purcell. Yeah, right. Ooh. Ooh, you've got a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, most of it's... Yeah, I, I want to catch up. I want to do some cool stuff. All right, so if I look at my, uh, oh, it's the wrong one. Oh. Um, I have I have another account, another login. Oh. Should be using. Um, but it doesn't matter because it's it's gonna we're, yeah we're gonna pop up here. It's gonna be great. Does it work yet? No. We'll we'll notice. Refresh. Refresh every every once in a while. Not yet. Should it be reactive? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think they'll force reload out from under people. OK. Uh, yeah. Because Convex will. Convex right. will. Convex does a lot of things reactively in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK, want to brainstorm next time? What are, what are sure. uh, I mean, the big one that we're excited about is like, let's get some Rust working. It would be cool to have. Um, writing code that uh, yeah 
And is it enough? So if, if I was going to hack on that, it's not enough to... The fetch is a problem, and the text encoder is a problem. Yeah. Um, the, the fetch is an easy-to-solve problem. The fetch encoder is an unbounded problem. Who knows? Because there might be six more APIs we need to implement. Yeah. Um, well, so fetch. Okay. So yep. fetch fetches feels like fetch we can't do. But right. We but do we can. Like we fetch. we can. Right. We need to. Yeah. We should look at the settings for that generator thing, or maybe there is a like a yeah some way to change it, or or if not, we can patch it. Right. We can we can get the output and then change the fetch to something else. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what if we is it npm run build just to make sure there are no it's funny how broken the uh, things are um, yeah. here I'll, I'll log into Vercel and, and, and see the, I here. expect Vercel runs npm run build, build oh right right so we maybe we have build errors good point yeah like this yeah Oh, oh, that's good. Nice. Let's let's fix some of that. Um, Vercel. Shoot, no idea what my Vercel credentials are, so I'm not gonna be logging in. I'll continue with email. Maybe I will be. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Ball shoot. Let's read that. Uh, great error. Perfect. Uh, I'm sure you're right. Uh, ID. We don't like ID. Yeah. So I tried generic ID. Uh, it but but our real ID should. But oh oh, it doesn't come from values anymore. Yeah. yeah. Just just delete this and 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 yeah, auto complete it from wherever it's supposed to be from. It's from dot slash. Uh, which file is this? Convex slash generated. Undergenerated slash. Ugh, I don't know. We should just auto. Oh, nice, perfect. Okay, and we have to add the type parameter on line thirty-eight of. It's so hard for me to remember that I can, I can also participate and make these changes. What's it called? Balls. What do you? How do you name your database tables? Plurals? Um, users or user? Yeah, plural. plural. Users. Okay, so that one worked better. Rails used to do a thing where it would it would you use a use a database table name with a plural, but it would try to singularize it or something. A bunch of that stuff. Active record, like the ORM, had a bunch of mappings so that you could pluralize or singular or whatever. Oh. It was wacky. Yeah, once you start getting Okay, building, fixed build, great. 17 seconds in. Shouldn't take long. Collecting page data, optimizing, boom. Okay, uh -huh. there we are. I wanna get in there. Ooh. Uh -huh. So, when I did this before, I put a delay on the. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think it seems to be fine. Without but it, like when you watch me juggling this, come on down, right? It, it it bounces quite a bit for you. Yeah, it bounces by. Because like we could by I mean this is the craft that like I remember playing StarCraft and everyone would be like turn the latency way up so that it can be synced. Like if you oh, make no. all of your actions happen at a later time yeah there'll be delay for the player but this is not a real time you're not unless you are juggling this is not a very uh -huh. real time game um, right so i think it'd be fine to put you know, 200 milliseconds delay on there mm -hmm. such that everyone gets everyone you know everyone's computer gets to know about the move before it is actually happening and therefore can play the animation from the start so that yeah i'm I, I gonna do that real quick just just do that. i want to see it smooth but then then we can be done i'm, I'm just just too excited uh cool how do we do that in the shoot in the shooting is it called shoot or or stroke or push or publish in publish stroke uh 
Why are we using it? Publish. Hmm. Identifier, angle and degrees, mightiness. I guess it's in the implementation of publish, uh, which is back in the convex stuff, right? Call. Publi publish stroke. Um, where do we get that? Here's date dot now plus delay. Great. There's a variable right here. Let's make this 200 milliseconds. Yeah, milliseconds. I claim this, and maybe 200 is not enough, but I, I, I claim this will be like beautifully smooth now. Oh, and it just, it's just going to live update too. We don't have to wait for a Vercel build. This is great. Yeah. Where did the wall go? Oh. So it feels less responsive for me, but it looks better. Uh, I, I think we need a little more. Yeah, we need just a little bit more, I think. But I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, 500 milliseconds. Oh, interesting. OK, so now my one is sort of jumping, right? Because it uses the current location as of, where I, as of when I clicked. But then it continues animating after that. Wait, wait, what? I don't get it yet. Um, so I. Um, so I'm going to push it up here and then click. And then while I clicked, and then it had time to drop back down, and then it started shooting out from where it was. From where it was. OK, yes, right, right. And that is the problem with it. I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess it should, because that would happen with mine, too, right? Um, wait, where am I? Why do I see me? OK. Oops. So I guess what you would really want is this x and y should also be, this current position should take in a time. And that time should be this time. I guess. So then it's delayed. I see. Uh, I see. But but so yeah. But I want to say it's like when, when I'm control. aiming is like yeah. how the the angle I want it to take. Like that right. that indeed was so. And right, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. If say that I we actually do this, we make it a golf game. Yeah. It's just sitting there on the floor. It's not moving. Yeah. And then that's when I decide to hit it. And mm, it's yeah. all about like, is it a smooth animation on everyone else's computer? If that's all we care about, then oh yeah, that makes and sense. and ideally we play a little animation on the client side here, so it's just like okay, you clicked and now it shows a little thing going woo, and mm -hmm. and so you're happy to, uh, or you know you I see some of these like it's a drag motion, so instead of clicking where you want to go, you come back here and you sort of drag something back, and then yep. it could slowly I don't know. Some, somehow Angry make you happy. Style. Yeah, yeah. We well, need an immediate effect, but okay, great. Thank you. That was fantastic. That was that was real fun. That was cool. Um, we work at this convex thing, and we're and we're gonna make it. It's gonna be good too. Well, we can talk about it on a stream too. But um, yes, but yes, we will. This is pretty fun. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think we're done. Thanks all. Well, just in case we have some sweet chat questions. Um, usually he tries not to say that out loud so that you don't have to acknowledge it. But but here we go. Um, ooh, will you backfill the index? Uh, yeah, we were. We that yeah. was the intention. Um, yeah, when you push, it will backfill the index uh, most of the time if you haven't just been like doing some some interesting testing where, that we've been doing today, or that I don't yeah. know what's going on. So, if there's not other there, stuff there going on, but that is the that idea. Might have, yeah, might have prevented it from. Happening. You should get a yeah. you know roughly instant backfill, um, or you're just not going to be able to use. You know, the push will wait until the backfill is finished, and for us, it never it finished, so it never pushed those. It should be that very code. fast. Um, although now I am worried that now we are creating an, a duplicate index. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> By pushing this one? Yeah. 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 But the, yeah, the idea is you do not push your code until that index is backfilled. So you're not pushing code that uses an index that's not there. So you don't get bad performance for a little bit. While you just, like, you're saying yeah. you have to use that index so the code won't even be accepted until it's backfilled. Yep. OK, cool. Thanks Thanks so much for everybody for watching. Talk to you. Uh, Sometime soon. Let's do this again sometime. Yes. It'll be great. Okay. See ya. Oof. Yeah. Stop recording.